A storm is brewing. <gasps> Dimitri on Jake Drake is a wizard. Within the Tempest, the best have come to test their skills and brave the storm. Oh, oh he missed it. Oh, he allowed a drop. <gasps> oh my goodness. The wheels, the wheels have come that, off. That could be the match. For some, this is familiar ground. Oh my goodness, 98, whoa. What and second, second. Move, move. Oh my God, like Jim G3. What a tactic. This is insane. Oh, look at Fabi, exhausting every last resource. The battles will be electric. Hey, seven, eight. You, you can't stop stop me. Oh my God, it didn't happen. The moves will be fast. It's game over. It's winning. Oh my God. Yes, it is. He's gonna make a queen. The stakes will be high. He just grabs his head. He can't believe it. He just oh, gave man. away the pawn. The 2022 Speed Chess Championship is now. Fasten your speed belts, my friends. We're in for a wild ride. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we hope your speed belts are fastened because we have another incredibly exciting Speed Chess Championship matchup for you today. Happy Monday, everybody. I'm your host, Grandmaster Daniel Naroditsky. Alongside me today, my good friend, the legendary Grandmaster, Jeffrey Zhang JX. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon. How excited are you to watch another Hikaru Nakamura Love on Aronian matchup? Good afternoon, Donya. Good afternoon or good evening to everybody out there in chat. Yeah, I am super excited to be here. I think there is no better way to start off your week than to watch two gladiators like her and Levon go at it today. Gladiators is the perfect descriptor. The games will begin in just a couple of minutes. But first, let's take care of a couple very important pre-show items. First, we need to ask what is at stake in the Speed Chess Championship the prize pool, a cool 100 Gs. The winner earns 4,000 with an additional 4,000 based on win percentage. And if you think, wait, have the numbers changed? They have because we are now in the round of eight. Both Hikaru and Levon have won their preliminary matchup. So, Jeffrey, the prizes are generous. Uh, the participants are incredible. And I always say this, they don't need any more motivation, but... The prizes are a nice additional bonus. But if you're playing Hikaru, you're already plenty motivated, aren't you? Oh, for sure. Yeah, everybody looking to take down the big Don note as Hikaru. But yeah, I mean, these prizes have certainly jumped from where we started. Um, but I will say that I think these players have both been around for quite a while. They played at the highest of stakes, and they will just be looking to play some good chess today. They will indeed. Let's take a quick look at our overall bracket. Levon and Hikaru, neither of them had uh, an easy preliminary matchup. Hikaru had the more commanding victory over the qualifier David Paravin. That's over on your top left. And right below Hikaru, Levon Aronian wins by one point. That match against Dimitri Andraken was probably top three fascinating SEC matches so far. Jeffrey, I think, will co-sign that point. And the other matches have been... Incredible as well. A very stellar victory by Nihal Saran in our last SCC matchup. Wherever you turn, Jeffrey, we've just had amazing action. Truly. I mean, it has been crazy. I think you and I had the pleasure of calling this Nihal against Geary match that went down to the wire. Obviously, Levon himself playing this epic thriller where he come, came back in amazing fashion against Andrekin. So it's just been amazing across the board, and we're going to keep seeing that, I hope. I'm quite sure that we will. Today's matchup involves Hikaru Nakamura, the number one seed, who faces off against Levon Aronian. Now, Levon, not necessarily a household name in online blitz, but that victory over Dimitri Andraken definitely raised eyebrows. And their bullet head-to-head, Hikaru holds a commanding lead. He holds a lead across all quick time controls, blitz, uh, bullet. But notice that in the classical head-to-head, -head, Levon Aronian actually holds a rather convincing lead. Jeffrey, do you think Levon is going to be seeking some sort of confidence from their classical head-to-head -head score? That is certainly a thing. However, this is unfortunately bullet and blitz entirely, so I don't think Hikaru will be worried about that record um, by any means. And I also would like to point out that if your name is not a certain Magnus Carlsen, uh, Hikaru has never, ever lost a match in the SEC. So that is something you have to take account for. Yeah, you certainly do. The extent of his domination can hardly be overstated. He has won the last 
four editions of the Speed Chess Championship. Moreover, if anybody except Magnus defeats Hikaru, that will already just by definition constitute one of the biggest upsets in SCC history. So Hikaru definitely has a big X on his back. Okay, let's talk quickly about the format. We remind you that the Speed Chess Championship is a 16-player knockout with many of the players already having been knocked out. Players cumulatively score points across three time controls until the overall match time runs out. In the event of a tie, we have a four-game bullet tiebreaker followed by an Armageddon if that is tied and the three time controls, which should already be ingrained in your mind, are 90 minutes of five plus one, the slowest time control, followed by an hour of three plus one, and the match concludes with half an hour, 30 minutes of bullet with a one second increment. And another thing, Jeffrey, that I try to point out before every match, one plus one, a very different game from one plus zero. And that increment, Levon's going to be holding on to it like, you know, someone who's whose boat has capsized and they're holding on to some flotsam in the sea. You know, he needs that increment today, doesn't he? He really does. I mean, Hikaru is just so fast, comes up with moves like at the speed of lightning. In those time scrambles, it doesn't feel like he ever blunders either. So really, really going to be tough for Levon in that time control. But the thing that I love about SCC, it's, it's very balanced. You can't specialize in a particular time control. Uh, you have to be ready to go in all three of them. You also have to be ready to change the pace, balance things out. So it's a really great dynamic that the format offers, and I'm looking forward to see how the players handle it. It most certainly is. Well, let's go over the Smarter Chess and community predictions. Smarter Chess has been incredibly accurate thus far, I have to begrudgingly admit. And Smarter Chess is predicting an 85% win probability for Hikaru. I think that's pretty fair. Uh, he predicts that Hikaru will have a two-point lead after the 5 plus 1 and will really carry the match away in the following segment. Now, obviously, Levon is going to have to break the narrative early if he wants to be competitive in, in this match. And, and Jeffrey, I, I really think that the 5 plus 1, those 90 minutes, that's where... Levon really has to start trying to uh, counteract the, the smarter chess narrative. I am totally with you. I feel like the five-minute portion will really dictate this match. Not only because, I mean, just starting out, Levon wants to really make Hikaru feel like, you know, he's here to play. He's here to fight. Hikaru, known for his bullet prowess, but I think people often forget that he also knows his way around the five-minute and longer time controls. I do recall a certain match that he had against the Big Fish, where he started it out with an adoption. So yeah, I think if yep. Levon wants any chance to, to compete here, he will need to get off to a good start. Yeah, he definitely does. And Hikaru just has a way of pulling away from the match very early. I mean, we'll talk more about his previous match against David Paravian. Uh, as the match gets underway, the community predicts 96% uh, of those of you who filled out a bracket and had this match in your bracket predicted Hikaru Nakamura to win with only 4% going for Hikaru, uh, going for Levon Aronian, 287 to be exact, and 55%, only 55% predicted this matchup to happen, and the reason why, I think, is because a lot of you thought that Dimitri Andraken was going to go a lot further in the SCC than he did, but that is going to be a storyline, Jeffrey, that we're going to be talking about a lot as this match gets underway. The kind of tendency of a lot of chess fans to underestimate players with whom they're not quite as familiar. And Levon Aronian, I think, is one of them. He showed in his last match that he can play fast. He has that online chess skill set. And Hikaru is not looking at this as, as a walkover. I'm pretty confident. Yeah, you do raise that point with the bullet. I think Levon stunned not only on Draken, but many others with his ability to manage those time scrambles uh, in that bullet segment. I also recall a niche uh Stun Nihal with his bullet skills. Like he even made me eat my words. I thought uh, Nihal was going to be a huge favorite in that. But that it just goes to show that I mean, when it comes to SCC, don't uh, expect anything. And that ninety-six to four, though. I mean, I can't seem to get over it. Uh, Levon, he's no slouch. But I guess it just goes to show how dominant people know uh, Hikaru is. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. And uh, the games are going to start. Very, very shortly. Another thing that has to be pointed out in Hikaru's match against David Paravian, uh, he started with A3 and H3 and all sorts of offbeat openings, Jeffrey. Do you think we're going we're gonna to see him repeating that? 
<laughs> for her, for his sake, uh, I hope he doesn't. I think Levon is the kind of guy that if you want to fool around with him, he's going to show you right to the door. So hopefully, yeah. I mean, I, I won't say that the approach to like sort of avoid your opponent's prep is not a good idea. I think Hikaru might still try that, but not at the expense of uh, starting out with a 1H3, for example. Yeah, I, I completely, completely agree. And I feel like, um, I, I feel like Levon is just going to bring his A game in terms of opening preparation, but we'll see. The games have started. Hikaru has the white pieces as the top seed in game one and a knight f3, b3. So as you predicted, Jeffrey, Hikaru going much more mainstream at the start of the match. Yeah, mainstream by his standards. Like, I wouldn't say knight f3, b3 uh, is your th what you see every day, but for Hikaru, that is his pet system and Levon should be uh, should be well prepared for it as well. Yeah, knight c6, and now e3 by Hikaru. So this is very standard fare. The bishop usually comes out to b5 in these lines, but we've also seen Hikaru play this uh, with an early d4. But here he goes bishop b5, and you can almost think of this as a reverse Nimzo Indian. Exactly. It is. Uh, we I, I think we are going down that path. White often takes on c6 here, plants it down at e5, and supports it with f4. And I think we're going to see that. Yeah, knight comes to e5, d3, knight d2, f4. You can rattle off a ton of easy moves here, which is why I think this is a very practical opening for White. And we, we've seen Hikaru play this, you know, almost exclusively in the Rapid Chess Championship with a lot of success. Right, I do recall a few examples. And Hikaru, basically, he wants to give the bishop pair, but he has the stallion on e5 and a lot of attacking potential with the ideas with, uh, that we spoke about, you know, f4, you often see a rook lifting up to uh, g3, and it could be very dangerous if Levon doesn't uh, play precisely. Yeah, for sure. And we already see Levon taking a good chunk of time. Bishop comes out to d6, knight d2, Hikaru responding almost instantly. And you normally don't rush with knight takes c6 in these types of positions. You try to keep the knight on e5 as long as possible. The favorable trade involves black taking on e5. That gives white uncontested control of the dark square. And an early b5 push here from Levon, looking to start something on the queen side, also perhaps giving the b7 square for his bishop to drop back in and reserve that bishop there. So a very interesting moment. I think Hikaru could keep continuing with this king side play uh, with the rook f3, rook g3 idea, or you can react the Levon's queenside uh, uh, pushes with the move c2, c4. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure if Hikaru wants rook h3, rook g3. You stay flexible with both options. Uh, meanwhile, Levon has to really consider how does he deal with this bind that Hikaru has in the center? Do you want to play a typical knight e8 at f6, driving away that knight? Or do you simply want to keep going with your queenside play? And, uh, sorry, but Danya, I guess, has some mic issues, so I will take over for the moment. Uh, yeah, so Levon here, I'm calculating move okay. C4, uh, just trying to how blast do I sound now? both diagonals. But I feel as if it doesn't accomplish exactly what I want to um, at the rate I need. After move, let's say, C4, Rook G3, there could be Knight G4. So I'm trying to address the problems uh, more concretely here. Maybe a Knight E8 move? With the, the drawback of that would be rook h3 and potentially queen h5. So he does play d4, opening up his bishop on c6, but also creating massive tension here in the center. I think white will react by maybe... Actually, you have a few options here. You could take on c6 and d4, which would be a pawn up. So perhaps this could initiate some wild complications. Thinking after knight c6, rook c6, ed4, cd4, 
Bishop d4, what is the follow-up there? Potentially just a positional pawn sec. Levon might want bishop b4 there and playing for that weak c3 square. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, alternatively, Hikaru could also move his rook to, say, g3. Yeah, and by the way, I am back. I apologize. I had some audio issues, but um, I know you've been doing a terrible job as usual, Jeffrey. You know, <laughs> a player of your caliber can't really handle the commentary yourself, of course. <laughs> So, no drums. Yeah. so d4 has just been played, right, by Levon? Yes, and I'm trying to understand, first of all, what is Levon's idea if I simply take on c6 and on d4? Yeah, that is a pawn, isn't it? And you can't play bishop f4 at the end because the rook captures and simultaneously defends the bishop. Right, so I was thinking maybe Levon just wants to play for positional compensation in, in the form of, let's say, a bishop b4 move uh, in that position. Uh-huh. And basically play against the C2 pawn, bank on your control over the C3 square, something like yes, that. Precisely. And I assume that Hikaru has to take the pawn now. Um, Levon might mm -hmm. also be considering knight D5, attacking on F4, and also bringing that knight to a nice central post. Yeah, for sure. And Levon hesitating on C takes D4. Yeah, you mentioned knight D5. He can play the move immediately. But to me, c takes d4 almost seems pretty automatic. Yeah, I'm looking at this line uh, deeper with the cd4, bishop d4, bishop b4. And how do you react for white? Because my idea is once you move the bishop, I'm going to plant my bishop on c3. And just say that for the pawn, I have big compensation just in terms of uh, my pressure along the c and d files. Yeah, and he does play knight d5, actually. Interesting choice. Uh-huh. And what is this follow-up if I just coolly protect my pawn with, let's say, g3? I guess then he'll play c takes d4, maybe stick a knight on c3. Ah, uh, he wants to knight there, okay. The thing is, like, in a blitz game, I'm, I'm worried about Levon's compensation here, because you make one misstep, white manages to get his pawn, let's say, to c4, and all of a sudden the compensation evaporates, but... The clock's coming really down to the wire. Her D takes C5 by Hikaru, and I think he's going to follow up with D4. And if he could get a move C4, that would solve all of his problems completely. He would have addressed that backward C pawn, and the pawns would get rolling. Exactly. C4 is on the horizon for Hikaru. I think the bishop has to drop back to D6 to gain that tempo against the F4 pawn. Absolutely, that would seem to be the case. I mean, if you allow C4 and your knight would have to retreat, that... Seems to be heading in the wrong direction. So at least after bishop d6, if white were to react to the pawn f4, you play this move b4, fixing that pawn on c2. Oh, that's a great move. He plays bishop b4. And now in the event of c4, he's planning bc, bc, and then bishop takes d2. If we bring up an analysis board really quickly, I'll show the line. c4, this is important, takes, takes. Bishop takes d2. And if you play c takes d5, looks like white wins a piece, but no. Black recaptures on d5, and the rook is under fire, so you can't take the bishop, you drop the exchange. Good calculation wow. there, Jeffrey. By Levon, I like bishop b4. That was elite provocation. He played bishop d6 to provoke g3 just so the rook is hanging in the line. So very, very deep calculation and a subtlety shown by Levon. And now the queen comes out to c7. I kind of stand corrected. I thought Levon's initiative was going to be insufficient. Now I feel like he's got... At the very least, full compensation. He's up on the clock. This is an early chance for Levon as he triples on but the C-file. Now C2 hanging. Yes, but Hikaru does have the move C3, I believe. It is protected <laughs> enough times. You do the counting. <laughs> it yeah, is, it we, is. <laughs> <laughs> There's like uh, four pieces for each side attacking on C3. But yeah, besides C3, though, I don't really see another alternative. It goes rook f2, but I thought now black can clamp down on the c3 square. So put a knight on c3. You can also put a knight on e3, but I'd be very skeptical about that move. It looks like the knight won't be able to get out of c2. Queen mm -hmm. a5, a different approach by Levon. He hits the a2 pawn, actually. Okay. Yes. Can you react with a3 with the idea after bishop a3, rook a1? So I guess rook a1, black will play b4. I feel and then like maybe like a... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I go c4 there. I, you allow me... To 
this cheeky idea where you can't take Empeza and I get rid of my backward C pawn. Oh, that's a great move. And now, and then the rooks on the C file kind of look dumb. And Hikaru starts rolling in the center. Levon definitely missed a three. He drops his bishop back to e7. Now Hikaru is making some progress, Jeffrey. He's going to put a knight on c5. Indeed. And while all of white's pawns are on dark squares, which is definitely concerning, however, a pawn is a pawn. A pawn is definitely a pawn. And it just seems like Black's initiative has fizzled out just a little bit. Levon's best approach here is probably just to play a6 and kind of sit on the position. He's so solid in the center, but I'm getting really worried as the clocks really get down to 15 seconds here. Ooh, and he's got the move A5 played on the board. Hikaru dropping below 15 seconds, so a very slow start for both players. I think he's got to start banging out moves now. And he does with F5, and he finds the right moment to open up the king side. Things getting a little dangerous here for Levon. Uh-oh. Down to uh -oh. 13 seconds and counting. Yeah, the king side attack piece is oh. starting to show up around the king. Black is just starting to crumble. You can't play F6 because if Rook takes D5 and Knight takes F6, Levon down to five oh, seconds. What He's losing control of the position. And there might be D5 opening up the Bishop. Also, that Rook on C6 oh. could be loose. Oh, this is when Hikaru is just so lethal. You can't take the pawn with either piece. Levon down to one second. I think he's dropping this one. He flags. Yeah, that wasn't I even close. Like, yeah, I mean, once both players had to start turning on the Jets, it was just Hikaru who intuitively feels the right moves, and that D5 move came with authority. Wasn't it insane how quickly it went from, okay, Black is down a pawn and incredibly solid. The moment Hikaru played F5, I could sense that Levon was losing control. Yeah, indeed. And as Alex is saying in the chat, never let the game go to 10 seconds each versus Hikaru. Otherwise, you are doomed, as we just saw. Yeah, that was absolutely insane. And the thing is, the problem for Levon is that if things, ever, if things get down to any time scramble, 10 seconds against 10 seconds, Hikaru is going to win 95% of the time. Let's, let's be real. So Levon just has to try to take the game into middle games where both players have time. He can't let it get down to these tactical scrambles. For sure, I don't think he can. I mean, he did show some really nice technique and form um, low on the clock against Andrekin, but Hikaru just... He's the world's elite. I mean, it's a whole nother animal. And in this time, we have a rather tame, tame English opening. This system with knight d4 that has been popular for, for a while now. And hard to make specific observations. I think the position is approximately equal. Maybe white has a small pull here. He's got better control over the center. But Ikaro more than happy to get these, these long, drawn-out positional middle games. I think that's his approach in the early going of the match. Indeed. And this idea, knight c6, knight d4, um, first of all, yeah, I guess you trade knights, but the main idea is to free that c pawn. And later, I believe Hikaru will follow it up with a c6 and perhaps even d5 to fight for the center. Yep. And the bishop does drop down to c5. c6, d5 is possible. You can also just play d6. So white, of course, has this typical idea of preparing b2, b4 and expanding on the queen side. But Levon, again, he's just taking a lot of time here in the early middle game, and I don't think that's setting him, setting him up for success. It does concern me, and I do remember playing these matches myself. There were always some nerves and uncertainty to begin the match. And I feel like, yeah, he's going to try, he needs to try his best to get some sort of rhythm and pace going because dropping one minute on, uh, down on the clock against a car is a recipe for disaster. For sure. For sure. And he continues to think, what is he thinking about, Jeffrey? I mean, I would, honestly, and I'm backseat driving here big time, but Castle's king side seems pretty automatic. Maybe he's attracted to the idea of bishop g5 and then trading it off on f6 and going knight e4. He goes rook b1, but pretty major sunk cost effect there. That move could have been played in 30 seconds. Honestly, yeah. And I feel like it could be... Just him trying to be a little bit too perfect. But we have to understand, this is blitz after all. The move that you make now is not going to determine the outcome of the game. So you just choose between three good ideas. And, uh, I mean, trust your instinct. Yeah, keep talking, Jeffrey. I, I briefly stopped, stopped hearing you. Ah, okay. Yeah, now so I, I hear mean, you again. Oh, okay. Perfect. So, I mean, Hikaru does need to address this b4, b5 idea expanding on the queen side. Um, he can go 
with c6 like i mentioned you could also play d6 but yeah ultimately deciding for c6 yeah and b4 is going to follow very likely before we're going to see a trade no hikaru drops back immediately to e7 and am i okay i guess the point is that b5 drops the a3 pawn these clever exactly. little details are Hikaru's so good at seamlessly weaving them into his play and we take them for granted like you can't play b5 how do you fix that issue maybe queen b3 but that's going to take more time off your clock right and Hikaru understands that it's up to him when he wants to open the a file so he's keeping flexibility and now i think he's ready for d5 he most certainly is and i think after d5 levon's gonna have to try to put pressure on that pawn maybe d5 queen b3 Okay, Hikaru trades first. Just looks like Black has a great position here. He does. I mean, it seems like he solved all his problems. He's about to develop his final piece uh, on the back rank uh, with the bishop on c8. But now I'm starting to wonder, can Levon play the move b4, b5 and sort of undermine that whole structure there? Yeah, b5, and then you want to take on c6, take on d5, and go, for example, bishop g5. If we bring up an analysis board real fast, I just want to show what is at stake in this position if black dilly dallies for even a move let's say black plays bishop e6 which is actually a pretty decent looking move what white wants here is to take on c6 take on d5 and then go bishop g5 and you know if you kind of sleepwalk into a position like this white's got rook b5 white's got queen b3 and things get really really unpleasant here don't they absolutely they do that d5 pawn surprisingly weakness and Levon's going to start by taking on d5 maybe a similar idea and he feels that he can play bishop g5 immediately and bishop g5 is played on the board attacking d5 indirectly bishop b6 and of course the immediate queen b3 runs into d4 and white drops a knight so everything seems pretty well defended here for the time being Levon down to a minute i'm honestly more worried about that a lot more worried oh, than i am about oof. the position on the board I mean, yeah, down a full, almost three minutes on the clock. This is unacceptable. Um, I'm thinking of bishop f6. Yeah, e4 and planning that knight on d5. At least you play opposite colored bishops, and this should be uh, easier to navigate, I would say, with low time, but, I mean, certainly just too slow out of the gates. And e4 is a good move, I think. d4, knight, d5 is the idea. And I guess Hikaru should maybe take on e4 and keep the position as open as possible with the two bishops. That was a logical approach, but Icaro's going to lock it up anyway. After knight d5, I don't think he intends on removing that knight. I think he wants to cling on to his bishop here, maybe a move like bishop g5, which would prevent white's rooks from occupying the c-file, and black could be the one pressing there in the near future. Instead, he goes bishop back to e7. I've seen a lot of games... Uh, I've seen white lose a lot of games in the English like this. So let's say there's a trade that happens. Black just sticks a rook on c3, and if Black wins this game, I think it'll have something to do with the C3 outpost and with the D3 pawn. Oh, yeah, and I think it would also have something to do with Levon sinking below 40 seconds, played Rook A1. He's trying to simplify as much as he can because he knows that the more pieces you keep at the end, it's going to be really difficult not to blunder uh, when his time gets short. Yeah, Rook A1. So Levon basically saying, here, take my pawn. Hikaru says, no, I want to keep pieces on the board. Of course, he can take on d5, take on b4 at any moment. I think he will do that with all of the rooks on the board. Yes, at some point. And that's why Levon, oh, he takes on e7. But positionally speaking, this is what you were illustrating. At least he plays bishop g4, though, to trade off his bad bishop. So takes, takes b4. And does Levon have realistic drawing chances in that position? I think so, because he's, he's getting... A few tempos, maybe with rook b1, potentially rook c1, and at least he... Uh, actually, I mean, the more I look at it, where is the compensation, though? And Hikaru doesn't even take the pawn. He says, I don't care about before. I care about the c3 square, because if the d3 pawn falls, then the game is over. If Hikaru occupies the c file, you know, the communication between white's pieces is broken. I love rook a5, though, by Levon. He's not just yeah, folding over and dying here. Rook a5, a critical resource here, counterattacking on that e5 pawn. And also, you could put the rook on b5, where it would not only be supporting the b pawn, but attacking both b7 and e5. I think he's going to do just that. Right now, we have some play going on on the king side, h4. Levon? And h, 
Yeah, H5 met with queen g5, I think. Ah, and you can't play f6 there because g6 falls. Rook b5, you called it. B Valbar, not a big fan of that move, though. I don't see why. I mean, for white, the next move is just to play h5, and I don't see how black... Like, you've got pressure on d3, but can you increase it? Yeah, h5, queen g5, queen c7. Maybe you kind of just shuffle your heavy pieces over and try to milk white's clock down to 10 seconds. But Hikaru right. not really seeing it so far. Yeah, rook b3 does three. attack on b4. So now he can take the pawn, but is the idea to... Oh, he's going rook d5. I thought he would take and go h6 and try to create long-term problems against Black King. Instead, Levon tries to keep all the pieces on the board. Which makes sense, actually. I mean, he's getting really active here. I do like flicking in that h6 move at some point and say, saying to Black, what are you going to do about your back ring? Exactly. It's not easy to push the b pawn here. There's tons of logistical issues. Queen d7 could come at some point. And it's a pretty easy position to blitz out moves in, isn't it, for Levon? It is, yeah. King g2, probably rook d7 next. I do like the king g7 move by Hikaru, though. Prophylaxis against h6, and now at least he doesn't have to worry about those back rank ideas. Yep, and now Hikaru's clock running down. He's below a minute. And will he try to push b5? Will he try to squeeze that move in despite the scary appearance of a move like queen d7? Maybe he'll play queen e6 here, try to get the queens off the board? Hard to Many say. options. Yeah, I, I do think Black can get away with just pushing the b-pawn. Maybe you start with a move like rook b1 and you start pushing. Yeah, I like rook b1. Kind of an open-ended move. And you're also creating a potential precedent for, you know, a queen appearing on soon. Whoa, king h6? Oof. Hikaru using his king. Trying to relieve some of the tension there, uh, Levon just simply ignores it. So if gh5, I guess he didn't like queen d7. But anyway, we might see an ending Takes. here. Only Takes five seconds C7. for Levon. He should be fine here. I think it's enough counterplay that he's running off. But rook ah, b2. But rook rook b2. b2, Jeffrey. Oh no, that's going to be a nasty move to face. Uh-oh. Levon king running runs. up with the king. I think you can take on g6 here. King g5 Ooh, is just why mate. Did you, oh, why did he allow king h5? I thought king g5 was just checkmate. Now Levon is still in it. But he must be lost here. Rook h2. Okay, he takes it. No, rook, rook d2 is winning for black. Yeah, even this, you just tie white down completely and now the pawns simply fall. No, white's down a pawn and, and the king is too passive. There's no way he's holding this. Just take it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Levon will have to regret that. Those early moments where he sunk into thought. I mean, these next few games, he's got to make an adjustment there in terms of the clock. And the game here, not totally over just yet. Hikaru being very, or Levon being very resilient, but his king is cut off. There's just nothing. D2. D2 ends it. Oh, maybe not uh, yet. Well, <laughs> Hikaru being a little bit sloppy there. Jeffrey, yeah, there I don't no think reason he, he should have gotten this. <laughs> no, but the good news for him is that Levon is a human, not an engine. I know that the engines defend these queen and rook until the cows go home, but for a human, you just won't be able to find the right squares for your rook. That's a great way to put it. What Hikaru has to avoid are these stalemate tricks where white gives the rook away and you're forced to capture it, and your king is stalemated. So here, you need to be careful. Levon's, Levon's down to a second. There's just no way. There's just no way. No, or is there? <laughs> king starting to walk. Well, there is rookie three there with the no, stalemate. This ends it. Oh, not yet. Rook c2. Holy smokes. Hikaru's struggling here. Oh, he's going to flag. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, I don't think he found the way, but it was just too tough. Like, wherever you put your rook, you might blunder a mate or, or the rook itself. That's just crazy. And you're right. I mean, those early minute, that minute he spent on, on the move rook v1, it was just a matter of time. He defended excellently. But, Jeffrey, we just know that Ikaru is going to keep finding chances and keep putting you in a position where you're likely to make a mistake until you do. And it's largely a matter of time before you do. It really is what he does best. I mean, just the way he mounts the pressure, he keeps the pressure on you for the, I mean, just the whole game. And that's why you need time to deal with all of those little tricks. And in this game, Hikaru playing 2b4, not a mouse slip. I mean, we've seen him play that kind of move before. We have an exchange of the b4 pawn for the e5 pawn. 
according to th theory, Black should be slightly better in these positions, but I feel like evaluation just mean nothing when Hikaru's playing. <laughs> it does feel like that, doesn't it? And yeah, the B4 for E5 pawn exchange is something that was featured in the match against Paravion. I had the call there. And yeah, Paravion did seem to be getting these sorts of positions where he had the open E file for his rook, but Hikaru just simply said, look, I have more control of the center. Easy play for my pieces, and I think I have to move like c4. He's going to be quite happy here. Yep, c4. He's got the b file. Rook b1 could come at, a, at an inconvenient moment to pressure the pawn on b7. And e2 can be easily protected with either rook e1. He can also play e3, but that move seems a little bit, a little bit dicey, weakening the d3 pawn like that. Yeah, I like simply rook e1 here. I think you just hold the structure, no reason to weaken the diagonal. And at some point, yeah, we're going to see a rook b1. We might see a g4 at some point that black has to be aware of. So lots of flexibility, I think, for a car in this position. Absolutely. He's taking some time trying to figure out the best way to protect e2. Is there an alternative to rook e1 and e3? You mentioned e4. I wonder if he's considering throwing in c takes d5. No, but he plays e3. Yeah, Might but this was my worry. What exactly. was he gonna, what is he gonna do here? Yeah, the d3 pawn is loose. Like if you were to protect it with queen c2, then maybe bishop g6 would come immediately. And you might yeah. have to make a move you don't really want to. And if you play queen e2, then you're still pinned. Black can still go bishop g6. And if you have to play a move like knight f3 to e1, it's not the end of the world, but Hikaru must have a concrete idea here. There it is. Takes takes in d4, I think. Ah, is what he wants. this is very clever. Yeah, because you didn't want to play d4 locking in your own bishop. So first he takes on f6. And now, yeah, I must say the structure is good for white after cd5, d4, because black would be left with the isolated d pawn. And white can address the pin with g4 um, at, its, at his convenience. And there is also in the mix the, the very unpleasant move queen d1 to b3. <laughs> Obviously not with a knight on c5. Uh, but after d4, the knight moves, and queen b3 basically forks these two pawns. This is an incredible positional decision from Nakamura. Giving up the bishop, which sounds so counterintuitive, but he knows he's going to go d4, and he's going to play against that weak, isolated pawn on d5. Levon might be contemplating getting crazy with knight takes d3, and he does. I think this is a great practical decision. You might drop a pawn here somehow, but at least you keep the position open for your bishop pair. Queen comes out to a4, threatening the pawn, threatening knight e4. Levon has to tread very carefully. Another very nice move. Shutting Ooh, I down love the this. queen. And also, I think he's tying down the white knight. Because neither of them can move and release the protection of the other knight. Exactly. Can't go knight d4. Can't go knight c4. You can go g4 and free up the d2 knight. But where is that knight going to go? Maybe, okay, he's going to play rook b1 first. So now, I guess, I mean, a5 or rook b8 looks natural, but maybe Karo intends to play a3 and take that bishop. I think he does want to play a3. Now, there's a weird idea, bishop takes d2 and bishop e2, but then Ikara will grab c6 Whoa. with a counter fork. Yeah, that would have been interesting. But look at this idea from Levon. Knight oh. c5 and that queen is going to have to relinquish control of the a3 pawn. And it has nowhere good to go. If we pull up an analysis board, queen c2 might be forced walking into bishop to g6. Because this loses a piece. Bishop takes d2. And if queen takes d2, you drop the knight on f3. And Hikaru's going for this. And oh, he's gone g4 intermezzo. But that's got to be bad. If we go back to the so live board. fishy. At the very least, Levon is g6 winning exchange. Hikaru loses a pure exchange for no comp. I mean, the only compensation is the strong... Light squared bishop. This is a big sequence for Levon. He has to cash this in. Has to. Oh, I mean, he really does. And Robert Hess, our good friend, loves to mention those backward knight moves can be so pesky and hard to anticipate that knight c5 for sure did escaped uh, Hikaru's attention for a second. But we already know and we've discussed so many times Hikaru's magician-like ability to get out of these positions that most people would lose without much of a fight. And I already like the way this is going for him. The queens are off the board, but he's going to win c6. And his minor pieces are pretty well positioned to mount a, a serious resistance. Yeah. Now, 
you don't necessarily want to take on c6 right away, I don't think, because then the black rooks would come into action the move like rook a c8. And that's exactly what you want when you're up in exchange, is open files to operate. And an exchange of rooks. You called it rook to c3 and f4. Might be likely. No, Hikaru just says, I'm not in a hurry to pick up that pawn. You're right, he doesn't want the c file to open prematurely. And he might transfer that knight to the very solid central square of d4. And at his own leisure, will he pick up that c6 pawn eventually with, uh, with an f4? And he could choose which piece to take c6 with. Levant shifting his rook to an open file, and as you predicted, the knight lands on d4. Wait a minute, rook c5? I think Levant banking the on a c pawn. Yes, he would have knight d3 there, and after rook a5, c5, the c pawn would be mighty fast down the board. c5 is actually a huge threat here. Let's see what Ikaru can bring to the table. Maybe knight d3, rook back to c3, try to play against uh -huh, the knight. Ha, but I... Do I have c5 anywhere or there's knight c6? So it could get confusing, but Ikaru choosing simply to take on c6 instead. Oh, and this is so smart because if you trade rooks, the knight recaptures and you can't defend a5. Rook a8 would have run into a discovery with 97 check. Now Hikaru has a chance to keep the rooks on the board if he wants, but that would allow a very nasty back rank check on c1. Mm -hmm. I think this last move, extremely classy by Levon g6. Not only do you create luft, but you also stop an a potential knight f5 from landing on the board. And as you said, there is no rook a6, so Ikaru just has to trade rooks here. But knight c6 does win the a5 pawn. I think Ikaru is on the road to drawing this game. Oh. Obviously, a4 or a7 is not what black wants. So if black were to react with king g7, you take on a5, do you think I can draw enough play with, with like a rook c1 or rook c2? And... You're, you're speaking the right language here. You have to drum up that play before the knight re-enters the game. I think if Hikaru can get his knight back around to, to civilization, his drawing chances will be the highest they've been since he lost that exchange. Yeah, exactly. I think this is a very critical moment for Levon, how best to make use of this extra exchange. If rook c1, bishop f1, I don't see the flop. So he's going to go rook c3, just win back that a pawn, which I don't think Hikaru can hang on to. No, and, and he probably shouldn't. He should probably go knight c6, knight c4. He does try to hang on to it for the time, but he's doing it more to win some tempi. He's not actually... I think so. He's not actually going to try to keep... He can't keep this pawn. No, you simply can't. Um, after rook a3, uh, where do you think he should position the knight, um, the Sakaru? Well, d4 was my initial idea, but maybe the knight on d4 is no longer that relevant. Okay, knight b2. Levon, maybe keeping alive some hopes of rook c1, knight d3. I don't know how exactly he's trying to shuffle his, his pieces around. Yeah, so Kara, I'm looking for the right configuration to best, I mean, give me the best fortress chances possible. He's going to, he's really holding on to that a pawn. Well, what he's saying is, hey, I'm going to give you that a pawn, but you're going to have to allow me to exchange a pair of minor pieces. And if the bishop is exchanged for the knight, Jeffrey, knight and four against rook and three is basically a dead draw isn't it yes it is and i think i'm trying to figure out if rook against bishop would offer better chances for levant but it's hard to say looks I, like we are going to see the rook against knight. i don't think he's winning this i mean there are chances but hikar should take on a4 put the knight on d4 and chill and that's exactly what he's going to do assume knight of three yeah, this, this, you could call this a fortress, but it's more just that like black doesn't have any targets to attack. I, I guess that is a fortress. Levon's going to try, though. He's going to try to get his king or onto e1. And, and Jeffrey, like, it is very possible to lose this game for Hikari. He has to defend very carefully. He has to be able to give the right knight check at the right time and keep his king on a good square. So a lot of moving parts here for white. Oh, yeah, plenty of work to do defensively for Hikaru. The one good thing is that if Black's king ventures too far, I feel like white will always have a way to, to get counterplay on that f7 point. So mm -hmm. that's why I don't believe it'll be so easy for Levon just to bring his king up. Hikaru kind of going bunker style, and he pay pushes up the, the pawn. He wants to go h5 and carve out a weakness on f5. Also, pawn trades generally favor white here, but king e1 is a huge threat now. Yeah, uh -oh. that would tie white down to the defensive f2. So he's gotta. Oh, but this Ooh. should work. Like, you, after king e1, you leave your knight on e4, and I think that's unpenetrable. So Levon keeps the pawns on the board. 
Hikaru very close to a fortress, but but Jeffrey, 94, there's always going to be this rook a4 move, ah. and Hikaru's created another big weakness for himself on h4. That is a good point. Oh. But I thought, do I have f3 here and then with some knight d6 ideas? Yeah, Levon could lose this if he overpresses. If he loses f7 and g6, suddenly Hikaru's going to have a thousand passed pawns. This is crazy. How do you win yeah, this? Hikaru down to 30 seconds, but Levon, Levon's time ticking down now. And here we go with this again. All three games have gone down to time scrambles. Can Levon keep his composure? He brings the rook back to a6 to stop knight d6, but Hikaru's going to keep jumping around. Very important. And it's so easy to panic here when white is going to, you know, prance around with that knight. If you allow it to attack on f7, you might not have a defense. e5 could come. It's minus 5, but forget the eval bar for a second. It's down to the wire. Rook d4 check. Rook d4 is huge. Make a move. He's down to one second. Tie white down. Oh, e6, e6 pre-move. Five. Oh, it's still sharp. And this is a three-result game. But Levon should win this. Oh, he is winning. Okay, he's gonna win h4. I know that at least he can't lose this. But Ikaro has a big Wait, master. A Take second. h5. I don't think he should have given that away. But is it is it yeah, winning? What is going on here? It oh, is Rookie winning. Four and it is winning. Wow. And it's just mate. Oh, and this. Wow. Whew. What a wonderful finale. job there. Wonderful job by Levon Kipia's nerves. We should definitely pull that game up and show... Oh. <laughs> I pulled up the wrong game. Uh, that is uh. not the last game. <laughs> okay, let me pull up the uh, the previous game as, as the next one gets underway. Um, insane. Insane. I actually think that Hikaru might have had a draw. Apparently, Jeffrey, with a crazy move, knight to e6 here. That was the engine move. Giving up h4, but I guess you bank oh! on the g pawn. Oh, so the wow. idea is that after g6, the reason you put the knight specifically here is to be able to intercept the g file with knight g5 check. <laughs> I mean, so, good luck finding that with five seconds, yeah. So both sides promote, and it's kind of a 50-50 position, but obviously Levon did everything he had to do to win that game, and the decision to push his e pawn and give up the other pawns was actually an incredibly wise one. This is losing Hikaru not fast enough. Wow. And that is a very, very good sign for Levon. Um, just keep, I mean, the way he kept his converter there down to seconds, we saw it a lot in Andraken. I wasn't sure if he could repeat that today, but that is a very good, good sign there. Okay, so on we go to the next game. This is the last game before the uh, halftime break. And we have a, a, a Bishop's opening, which is another line that Hikaru has been playing with white. This time he's on the black side. And... I'm not too impressed with what Levon has so far. What do you make of this? Yeah, certainly a card very well versed for this uh, having experience on both sides. I guess Levon's concept is that his uh, pawn on d5 gives him some space. So, like, I assume he's going to go d4 at some point, recapture that with the knight, and say that, okay, I understand it's symmetrical, but my pawn on d5 just offering that slight space advantage. Okay, I mean, I have some chances here. We might have space advantage, and okay, minor advantage, yes. Yeah, d4, it seems to be, seems to be pretty uh, necessary here, because if you don't play it, if you procrastinate, then you're going to end up with this ugly pawn mass in the center, and black can actually go bishop g4 to prevent white from recapturing on d4 with the knight. Right, exactly. It could be now or never here. Um, the other big point that I will say is after d4, e4, knight d4, the bishop on c8 does lack developing squares. Because you're cut off from the g4 square, you're cut off from f5, and d7, albeit solid, is still a bit passive. White could us consider queen to d3 here to prevent the knight from coming out to f5, which I think is what Nakamura wants, given that he lacks some space here. Let's see how Levon keeps squeezing maybe a tiny edge out of this position. Yeah, he is going to allow knight f5, but then after knight f5 and bishop c5, maybe he wants to say that, are you really so sure about your double c pawn? So Ikaro again dealing away that bishop, but I guess he's following it up with knight f5. Yeah, very concrete idea. Bishop takes d4, knight f5, and Levon's bishop pair is going to be short-lived. And a draw here would be, I think, a good result for Hikaru, just kind of stabilizing after that loss. And yeah, knight f5 coming. Looks pretty solid. For black. 
It does, but I've seen Magnus uh, squeeze <laughs> these kinds of positions out in a Berlin, like a Bishop F1 Berlin resembles this type of thing. So yeah, I'm gonna see what uh, what Levon has in store. Maybe at some point he'll double the rooks or swing uh, swing some rooks. We'll see. He also has the long term idea of, of kind of King's Indian style, pushing c4, c5, launching a queenside pawn attack. But but the problem is that with the, with that open e file, I feel like Hikaru is going to be able to get the rooks off the board faster than White will be able to create serious play on the queen side. So let's see how this unfolds. Obviously, Levon. Holds all of the cards here. He's, I wouldn't say playing for two results, but it's a pleasant position for sure. Very pleasant. And that move F3, a slight concussion, a uh, certain maybe Ben Feingold frowning mm -hmm. at that move, but it does force black take on D4. And now with the queen on D4, you tie down the rook to uh, on A8 to the defense of that A7 pawn, which could be annoying. So rook E8, Karo offering the trade of rooks. And again, his goal, given that he lacks space, is to get all the heavy pieces off the board. He doesn't have any targets, so a, a bishop endgame would be pretty much a dead draw here. Yeah, indeed. You simp yeah, you just wouldn't have any weaknesses to exploit. The bishop d3 is going to play it slow. Maybe he has your idea in mind of the c4, b4, c5. I think he does. I think he's also thinking about a, a later queen e4, maybe when the rooks are, are off the board. And Hikaru... I've seen this idea before of like rook takes c1 and then queen f8 to make space for the other rook to come in. But Hikaru plays this more actively with queen g5. I like that move. Th that's a good move. Yeah, not only do you connect the rooks, but you have this sneaky little idea of entering white's camp with queen d2. Although the moment I say oh. that, I realize there's bishop h7. Oops. <laughs> that would be... So uh, yeah, I've got to be more careful. But what about queen to g3? What is Levon planning there? Uh... Maybe he wants just an endgame. I see him slightly shaking his head, perhaps uh, forgetting about that move. But yeah, I mean, the endgame, perhaps a little bit too dry uh, to, to really hope for chances. Also, Queen F4. Knowing Hikaru, he might go Queen F4 and say, wait a second, you've made a lot of weaknesses on the king side. I'm going to start thinking about playing for a win here. Yeah, certainly an option. I'm not sure which one he'll go for. As black... As soon as you play the moves like b6 and a5, just consolidating the entire queen side on dark squares, I think you simply don't have any chance of losing this game. Oh, totally. And Hikaru says, hey, I'm up a minute. I've got active pieces. I'm going to keep the queens on the board. Levon really kind of stretching himself thin on the king side. But for the time being, you know, everything's still well protected. I still think the game is very likely to end in a draw. Yeah, I'm in agreement. E6. I think we could see the rooks being traded. He goes queen d4, which is a very interesting move, taking advantage of the fact that black just pushed his pawn to b6. So if you were to take on d4, cd4, there is this hole on c6, which white can exploit. That's a super kind of classic GM move. I think a lot of people would reject it because of the double d pawns. But the weakness on c7, as you said, far outweighs the sort of visual defects of white's pawn structure neither deep pawn will be really possible to attack in that end game so hikaru needs to react because queen takes f6 will cripple black's king side pawns maybe rookie five can be considered here putting a rook between the queens what do you think yeah i i am wondering about that move as well and, and trying to understand the structure after a rookie five but i was oh. curious about this too so queen d4 c ah, i thought he was going to play c5 and immediately address the c pawn Instead, he plays a6. What's the idea? To play bishop to b5? And is he not worried oh, about his c-pawn? He's going to put his rook on a7. That's the idea. Yeah, but <laughs> you say it like uh, it's a great thing. But I'm not <laughs> no, sure no. about the looks of it. <laughs> but it's solid. And, and Hikaru is saying, you're not entering my position here. And maybe he'll follow up with bishop to b5. But Levon's going to probably keep the bishops on the board. I think for sure he will. And he's just got a free hand here. Like the rook on a7 is going to be stuck there for the remainder of the game. And meanwhile, Levon can do what he wants on the king side, just expanding there. And he does indeed. He pushes the f-pawn up. He's trying to create a second target on the king side, which he'll be well equipped to attack. That rook on a7 has seen better days. <laughs> to put it mildly, yeah. And <laughs> here I just, I like bishop b1 simply keeping the material on. You have f5 in your back pocket. I don't think black can ever get around to that d5 pawn. It looks 
really nice for, for Levon. But Ikaro kind of just sitting and preventing f5. And if you're not playing f5, then what are you doing? Because the king can't enter black's position. There are no, there's no pathway into black's territory here, which is a problem for Levon. Well, at some point I am going to launch with f5. So maybe I start with bishop b1 if it's my turn as white, and then I'll play f5, sacking a pawn temporarily, but I regain it immediately with king f4. Lovely idea. Very instructive. And I think he's doing just that, bishop d3. And f5 coming to a theater near you, I think, on the next move. Yeah, I'm really surprised at how quickly Hikaru was willing to, you know, just put his rook on a7 and, and defend this. Now, if we take the opposite perspective, after f5, g takes f5, king f4. Yeah. Can black just liquidate the rest of the king side with f6? Ah, that... It's still, still speculative, <laughs> I feel. Like, even if you liquidate... My king is so active, and I have ideas of, you know, penetrating further. But Levon, he's going to hold off on that idea. Again, he doesn't really need to rush. Black just sitting tight right now. You know, Levon trying to milk Yukaro's clock down because every move is, it takes a lot of energy to play for Black. He has a lot to watch out for. And Yukaro maybe was... Oh, rook a8. So he reshuffles his rook to c8, a slightly better square, I think, because now c6 is in the mix if white moves the bishop away. But it's not as secure. Like, imagine a bishop appearing on that diagonal. It would instantly drive your rook away. Although, now Hikaru has the pawn f5, so I'm not sure if there's going to be a break. Is it a fortress? That's the question. It very well might be a fortress. The king is very well capable of meeting, of, of defending h7 and e7. It just shuffles between f7 and g7, depending on where white's rook goes. Yeah, now Hikaru gets the rook on e7. So oh, I that's perfect. Yeah, I think he solved his problems here. Yeah, once he gets the rook to e7, I think that's basically all she wrote in terms of White's winning attempts here. Yeah, agreed. I feel like Levon could have done a bit better, but a draw certainly a reasonable result. You get it, go into the first break down a point, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, winning these types of endgames against Hikaru, I mean, we, we, I think Magnus is maybe the only person who can do it with any kind of regularity. And this is just a dead draw, no breakthroughs. And they're going to find a repetition here. <laughs> well, I don't know if you caught a, some certain moments in the uh, last Hikaru match where he had against Bravian, but when we got into this sort of dead draw positions, he did show a tendency to waste time, although here he does give the draw. Yeah, and I, I, I think he would waste time at a bigger lead or the match was further advanced. I think in the three-minute portion, we're going to see Hikaru pulling out all sorts of gamesmanship to milk the clock down. But in any case, we have reached... The halfway point of the five minute portion. Jeffrey, a one point lead for Hikaru. He, he's got to be happy with the result, but I think Levon is happy with the trend of the match. I think he's happy to have scored that comeback win. It, you know, nothing has been decided yet, right? Oh, no, no, no. We're still in our early phases of this match. I think if Levon just improves his rhythm and get, eases himself into this match, there could be a lot of potential for him coming up. So we will see that on the other side of the break. We will see indeed as Levon will have the black pieces in the next game, but first the players are going to take a short breather. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the Speed Chess Championship. Uh, it's been a fascinating match so far, and Hikaru Nakamura will continue facing Levon Aronian on the other side of this short break. We'll be right back. When Damon first approached me with the idea of teaching children to play chess, I thought, you want to do what? Oh, OK, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm behind you. I support you. But how are you going to do that? And the more we talked about it, the more he laid out the plan. We tried some things. And 15 years later, we have a fabulous program.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Speed Chess Championship. 45 minutes in to Hikaru Nakamura's round of eight match against Levon Aronian, GM Daniel Narditsky, GM Jeffrey Zhang, chopping it up for you today. It's been a pleasure commentating this uh, long-awaited match. Jeffrey, it's been close. The score is two and a half, one and a half as we pull up the chess.com blitz insights. What catches your eye here? What's caught your eye so far in this match? Yeah, it has been back and forth. Uh, it was a quick burst by Hikaru 2 0. It looked very concerning, but Levon able to sort of right the ship with that third game. Yeah, moved to a one point gap. Still a lot of chess to be played. And the Blitz insights, I mean, it's hard not to be rocked by that first statistic there. 30,000 <laughs> games for Hikaru to only oh, my near 200 by Levon. Damn, girl. I, I don't even want to count, you know, the, how much percent above, you know, Levon's game that is. I'm sure the, the statisticians in the chat are having a field day. Their average accuracy is similar. Uh, obviously, Hikaru's win percentage is absolutely ridiculous, Jeffrey. I mean, 13% losses, 77% wins. I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah, and merely, and I wanted to say also at the very end, 54% losses by flag by Levon. I mean, if you lose half your games like that, it does raise some sort of alarm bells. But I think he's gotten a lot better with his bullet skills and handling those time scrambles. He has, and, and a lot of players have, which has been so fun to watch. Players have adapted to this new online chess ecosystem. But in any case, the next game is underway. Hikaru uh, essaying a, a Kali system, which has, been, which has been around for well over 100 years. It's kind of the inferior cousin to the London system, except I don't really consider it an inferior cousin. I think it's a, more like a brother. <laughs> that would be a fair way to describe it. Yeah, I mean, the main difference here is you don't, Put your bishop out, but you keep other flexible options. And here, Hikaru is content with just transposing this into like a QGA with colors reversed. But I think he's going to say that, okay, I get it. Quick B for bishop B2, and then I'm happy. But I think Levon is happy as well. He takes on C4, an early end game. You know, set your alarms for five minutes later. <laughs> Let's wait for this to get interesting. I always feel like I have a hard time evaluating Jeffrey whether. White space advantage on the queen side is a good thing or a bad thing. It's inherently a good thing, but you, you're also creating kind of a Swiss cheese situation on some of the light squares. True. It is very tricky, especially when you get hit with like an a7, a5 for black. How do you react to this? Because if you push b5, then a knight could suddenly plant itself on the c5 square. So yeah, certainly tricky business, um, but both sides handling it pretty reasonably here. Key to... Nice to see uh, Hikaru put that key in the center there in the end game. He could bring his rook, either rook to c1, maybe rook ac1, rook h2, one. that's the conventional way of positioning your towers. And Levon likely to do the same thing. You mentioned the c5 square. Black could try to provoke the weakness of that square with a7, a5, a very traditional idea in these uh, Queen's Gambit accepted endgames. Right, exactly. And for sure he'll be considering that on his next move. One thing you have to evaluate, though, is after a5, b5, white is going to try and fight for that c6 square. And maybe mm -hmm. say, like, okay, I'll give you c5 square, but can you deal with a potential knight landing on c6? And what is sort of the fight for, for those two key squares there? Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting point. The, the knight landing on c6 can be far more destructive then a black knight ensconcing itself on c5. So rook h to c1 by Hikaru. I think a lot of people in the chat are probably wondering why he didn't put the other rook on c1. And Jeffrey, that is one of the hardest questions in chess. Which rook to put on a certain square? We've all struggled with it. Oh my god, yeah, tell me about it. But I think in this scenario, the reason why he wants to put the rook on a1 is he might be anticipating that potential a5. And once your b pawn moves, the a3 pawn could lack protection. So he wants to keep the rook on a1 supporting it. Great point. I totally agree with that take. Levon playing it pretty conservatively with knight e8. Two, two ideas are possible. Bishop f6. Get the dark squared bishops off and maneuver the knight around to d6. Maybe try to knock the bishop off this diagonal. And later on, you could throw in an unpleasant check on a6. Oh, yeah, indeed. A really lovely idea. Typical in the QJ. And at some point, let's say uh, white makes a move. Black plays knight d6. You drop mm -hmm. back with the bishop on d3. There is this idea of f6, e5 that exists, taking control of the center and also blunting that white bishop on b2. That's a great point. I think that's worthy of showing on the analysis board. 
So let's pull that up. Let's say white plays, you know, not entirely unlikely that a move like this will happen. But after knight d6, as Sicaro putting his knight on b3 there, f6, and then e5. And as you pointed out, the bishop is now biting on granite, to borrow my, my favorite expression. And black is also threatening a fork on e4, which is not all that easy to uh, parry without further positional uh, concessions. If you play e4, the other knight could get around to f4. Anyways, this is a nasty idea. And, and it's I being think implemented it's on board. by Levon. Beautiful call. But Absolutely. in this situation, is there like a knight f d4 that could harass black? So knight f to d4 hitting e6. I guess I could go bishop d5, but you're saying why we'll go knight c6 and get the bishop pair. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah. I would have at least been slightly more hesitant as Levon. You can also go with the other knight, but I'm worried there it could be like e5, e4 potentially. Yeah, concretely, I actually think knight bd4, e5 might even win material straight away. Guess what? It's knight f5 there, mm. but black could still go e4 in that position <laughs> with some complications. <laughs> right, that would be crazy. But I think Kikaru... He, okay, there's also a rook c7 too. So quite a few options to sort of uh, take advantage of that f6 move. Hmm. Maybe Hikaru thinking about which knight to put on d4. Mm-hmm. At least partially. And we're about to get some fireworks, I think. Yeah, knight f4. So, yeah, is let's on say knight f4. I've been thinking about this position. And now, okay, bishop d5. I guess if knight c6, you want to keep that really powerful bishop in the middle on d5. So, I think you'd go rook e8. Now, what would you make of that? Rook e8. After knight c6. So, bishop d5, knight c6, rook e8. Yeah. Yep. And then I take e7, you take back. I put the other knight on d4. Then you can go knight e5. I mean, I agree that the bishop pair isn't exactly a game changer in this particular position. The knights are very uh, jumpy in, in this position with a lot of weak squares that they can sink their teeth into. Yeah, I but, mean, besides bishop d5, like, if you want to play the move e5, but I'm worried about even potentially knight e6. Like, there is, of course, knight c6 as well, but... It's 96, and the knights start hopping. There's also the crazy 95, sacking e6, but driving the king out to d3. Whoa. I've been trying to make sense of that for a while now. He's played oh. it. Knight takes d3. Yeah, Hikaru okay. seems to have been expecting it. And now, wait, oh. is there some bishop a6? I mean, knight c4 almost works. I don't think it does, but there's some like mating ideas, potentially, with the white king stuck on c4. You're saying bishop a6... Levon plays the tame rook to d7. He basically just says, hey, I'm only a pawn down, and look at the state of white's king. Yeah, he's going to keep all the threats alive. I feel like if I'm a car, I just want to get that king out of there. Can I play e2? e2, yeah. What is Levon's follow-up to that move? Is he going to just snag the pawn on g2 and restore? No, then rook g1. Right, that would run into rook g1. So that's not an option. What about bishop a6? King e1. And right, I guess sort of after king e1. Mm -hmm. There is knight c4, but it doesn't look that menacing. Okay, bishop a6 played. Good call. King f3, I thought was out of the question, but maybe it's and nothing is out of the question here. <laughs> <laughs> it might be in the question, but I think I just go back and ask you, you know, would you like a draw? Politely looking up at the opponent. Yeah, Kikara says no, and knight c4. But yeah, this is the critical position. What's he what's he up to now? Is he gonna just play a slow move? Like king f7, rook c8. Oh, knight d4, knight e5. Ah. Oh, that is a nice idea. You do not want to fall into that asset card. So probably knight f4 instead is forced. It is, and it's been played, and now Levon can keep accumulating the pressure, and he does. And somehow, like, no question that he's got full comp for the pawn, and probably and then some. There's like knight a3 and rook c3 threats <laughs> in the air. A lot of stuff going on. That doesn't quite work, but you see what I'm saying. I do, I do. I'm picking up what you're putting down. And that bishop on a6, sort of controlling all those squares and cannot be contested. Very important that white doesn't have their own bishop to contest that nasty bishop, which could, I mean, could really uh, drum up some of these tactical ideas which, uh, which you're thinking of. Another big chance for Lamont, especially given Hikaru's clock time, a4 is a nice move, though. That's a calm move in a difficult situation. Hikaru preparing to drive the bishop out of a6 with b5. And 
also creating a stronghold on C6 to uh, reawaken a, a long dead conversation and then maybe get his knight around to d4. Yeah, indeed. It seems like a moment for Levon that he needs to figure out what exactly can he do. I mean, it seems promising. There's certainly compensation which exists, but it can really quickly evaporate if he doesn't find the right uh, sequence. Yeah, it's not easy to find a move somehow. All of the key squares are defended. I like the look of knight e5 here, maybe setting up the threat of g5. Yeah, taking advantage that the pawn on b4 is loose. You could also do it in the other order. You could play g5 first, knock the knight back, and go knight e5. And what I'm trying to exploit is the weakness of the b4 pawn. That's the drawback of a4. But Levon drops his bishop back preemptively. Okay? Threatening g5, and that g2 pawn is extremely targetable. It is. Maybe king f1. Played. Uh, yeah, just fully hanging on. I'm, yeah. Um, Levant's clock. If... Levant's clock. Oh, man. Yeah, time is dwindling. I still like the move g592, but I just can't figure out a follow up. Rook dc7. Both players just kind of staying composed, making threats. Now, bishop e1 comes to mind. And the rook on c1 is protected twice, so no discoveries. Very important to note. Uh-oh, 10 seconds for Levon, and Icaro's kept the status quo, Jeffrey. This is exactly what he wants, and he's going to play King G1. He's going to make these slow KG moves and oh, wait for Levon. It. I've been through this so many times. I know this feeling. In five seconds, just got to make moves. Bishop D6, just start. Good move to start 95. Trade of rooks. Maybe the other rooks will get traded. Rook C4? Rook C4, perhaps. Goes G5, the knocks knight. the knight away. Knight's going to maybe remaneuver to F5. Knight e2, is there knight d3? Levon keeps his control over the position so far, but two seconds. Taking rook c4, got to move. Rook moves away, the bishop's attacking the knights. This reminds me of that early game which Levon won with the bishops dominating the knights, but Levon opening up an f4 square for his knight, and knight d5 is a threat. Oh man, and if Akaro can somehow position these knights, there is He's no gonna entry flag. still. He's going to flag. Oh, but oh, now it's starting to fall apart. Knight d8, knight c6 is possible. Now he's got this menacing pawn majority. Oh, he blunders the pawn, though. Does win c5 at least. Rook e3, rook h5. Okay, attacking two at the same time. Levant staying afloat here. Oh, and man, he's the done a marvelous job. He's this up is a amazing. Pawn. Amazing play by Levant. And now he, the worst is behind him. He can... Well, no, oh. he can't play for a win. Yeah, he needed to somehow get an a5 there. Now, this could be somewhat unpleasant. I've lost this to Hikaru a million oh, times. Oh, the 94, King G3. King E3, it's and it's a winning pawn endgame. He walked into a pin. Oh, my lands, and it's over. What um, was Bishop he, C6? Yeah, he did such a good job, but it's so hard to maintain your quality when you've been playing for two seconds, like the last 20 to 30 moves. It's so difficult. And if I may bring up that game again, again, just, to, just as an instant replay to show people where he went wrong. I mean, it was, as you said, marvelous defensive job. But, Jeffrey, the reason he played bishop c6, I think, is he saw that after king a7, there was rook h6, and Hikari would have won this. Um, the way to draw was to go king e7, and after rook h6, apparently just giving up the pawn gives you a, a pretty untouchable defensive setup. But, yeah, holding this with two seconds against Hikaru is, oh, that is would impossible. would still be torturous. Yeah. And the knight is just such a dangerous piece in time scrambles. It's an objectively better piece than the bishop when, you know, the clocks get down to two seconds apiece. Yeah, I okay. did feel like the moment he lost the A-pawn and Hikaru restored material, just not only having the knight, but you have the F4 square, and black's pawns were split in that endgame. So just a really rough uh, sort of grind down that Hikaru put on there. And we have a Frankenstein Dracula variation, um, which I think is what this is called. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I am unable to confirm that. <laughs> mm. But it looks like a good position for Levon in the early going. If we rewind a little bit, uh, Queen H5 here, Knight D6. He, he goes back to B3. Now the actual Frankenstein Dracula, I think, goes Bishop E7. But he Carl plays a weird move, G6. Now, it doesn't blunder a rook because of queen e7, pinning the white queen to the king. But Levon basically saying the endgame just sucks for black if he takes on e5. Oh, yeah, for sure. Queen e5, d5, your knight would be forced back. But this endgame, too. I mean, knight five, bishop d8. Ooh, this is, yeah, this is fucking troublesome. 
Now, maybe just grab on d4 and say, now I've got something to suffer for. Wow, Vaughn does do it. Playing out of a cannonball here, just blitzing out his moves. And knight c7, bishop d6 is going to come at some point, I think. Yeah, I mean, at minimum, to, gain, to regain your material. But that bishop on c8, I can't stop looking at. What a sad piece <laughs> that is. Yeah, it's like it's like a tooth, and tooth falls out, and your you know, your tongue goes to that space. Just can't you know a morbid fascination with, you know, that piece which has no squares. So maybe Hikaru will have to try to go b6, bishop b7 at some point. Right now, his knight is hanging, and he's deciding between knight e6 and knight takes b3. Which defensive approach do you think he's more likely to take? I feel like when you are lacking space, you definitely want to exchange pieces. At least that's what the principle says. And oh. yeah, Hikaru would agree. And there we go. Everything's traded. And I don't think this is as bad as it looks. After b6 and bishop b7, realistically, there's only one target, which is the d7 pawn. And even if Hikaru loses that pawn, you know, he will still have major drawing chances here. You're right. Yeah, it does look a lot worse than it might be. And black can just trade rooks here and go king f8, exactly what he's doing. And now he's finally going to be able to develop that bishop. Levon definitely didn't squeeze all the juice out of that. Position. I maybe he even played too fast in this case. Perhaps, yeah, an over adjustment over the last game when he played too slow. That does happen to me all the time. Yeah, you airball the first free throw, then you brick the second. And I think Hikaru is definitely holding this at this point. But still very unpleasant. I mean, White will put his knight on f4, start or e3, and start slowly just pressing Hikaru on both sides of the board. Yeah, I think these types of endgames are what people commonly associate with super GM play. Just a position like this, the evaluation is 0.2. And you're just kind of massaging and finagling some sort of advantage out of this. But Ikaro just sticking to his course, trading rooks and saying, how are you going to make progress here, Levon? I think I can play C4 and get my king to D4. Or wait a second, after C4, you might have to move B5, which would... Get rid of that weakness uh, on d7. Do you think he'll play d5 anyway? I guess now you have to reckon with king e2 and f3. But yeah, the maybe in this b1. case, you would have b1. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you have to rush with d5 right away. I'd probably start out with a move like king e6, which I think you need to play in all cases. And he plays it, and Levon will... He just has to, he has to find a way to get his king around to d4. So, so c4 will come, I think, at some moment. He could also try f3 and then king d3, king d4. But now the bishop has this diagonal mm. to, to chill on. Yeah, I'm probably starting to slowly agree with you. I think Ikaro should be able to hold this. If he just stays patient and, and waits, I don't think white really has a straightforward plan here. But I also agree with you that I, to say that this is a dead draw is underestimating how, how good these players are. And how good everybody at the top is in, in squeezing out wins from, you know, just positions that look ridiculously lifeless at times. Of course, Magnus is the originator of this entire philosophy. Maybe F3 and then some sort of like knight C2 retreat to open up a pathway for the White King. Yeah, maybe. The problem is, even if you do get your knight on D4, I'll put my king on E5 and say, all right, what's that? <laughs> exactly. This looking, this is looking like it's heading toward a peaceful resolution. F3 played. So now a choice of which diagonal to retreat to. I like, actually I was going to say I like the other one better. I would have retreated to C6 or B7. But this should, I mean, this should, can't, you can't really call this a mistake either. But at least here you can put one of your pieces on the original square of an opponent's piece, which always feels like a badass kind of move, especially when it's the same piece. Like a knight on B, a black knight appearing on B1. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always yeah, a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, King E3, okay, slowly, Levon making some progress. Okay, a four, a four. Right, and I'm wondering as a card, you play B5 just because I, I'm afraid if I get kicked back and your king appears on D4, then you might really start probing and making some progress here. Then White can continue pushing the seat on. The knight will have new prospects in the center. Yeah, and the fact that Ikaru is taking as long as he is is a good indicator that he is not comfortable here. The work is not done. So, so after F4? C4... Oh, yeah, you can start with F4. <laughs> I guess 
basically, even if black were to push b5, that doesn't stop c4. Why would go b3? It's important to highlight the defensive role currently played by the knight, which is preventing the black king from infiltrating, which would be the nightmare scenario for white. And it will only move, I think, once white's king is able to reach d4. It's also, of course, supporting the c4 pawn break. Yeah, absolutely. A magnificent job done by that knight. I think here you go c4, you take on g5, and you play king d4. And then you think uh, about your further plan. Agreed completely. Knight f3 instead. But now king c4, I guess then I can right. always drop back to d2, worse comes to worse. It does reserve that right, but... I don't think this is the right approach. I feel like he needs to make C4 work and get his king uh, onto D4. Agreed. That just seems like the only path forward. You're not going to win this game unless the white king takes over the center. And he goes knight to D4. But if the bishop drops back, Jeffrey, like king C4 is always possible. Where is he going from here? Is he going to go knight B5? Ah, oh, that might be his idea. Okay, he just wanted to get that bishop. I, he felt maybe it was like a thorn on C2. So... First, kick that bishop out, and now he's going to play for the king on d4. But the big liability now that he's created is that b3 pawn, which is on a light square. It doesn't have a path forward. So there's always going to be long-term problems with the black bishop attacking that pawn. And if black wins that pawn, then Hikaru will have the possibility of creating an outside passer. It's a little bit right. abstract, but I feel like it's going to be hard to win with that weight on your back. No, 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 for sure. You would have to be wary of, of that outside passer idea at all times. He's gone king d2 here. I think he is trying to be aware of, of that bishop c2. He wants to reposition this knight uh, in the in the coming moves. Yukaro's going to chill on the b1 h7 diagonal with his bishop. He just might go back and forth between g6 and e4 and h7. And now I think it's time. I still like the move knight f3. Just... Because, I mean, that d2 square, which you highlighted earlier, protects b3, um, also it can jump into e4. But he's going to put it onto another square. He could consider spicing things up on the king side with h4. The problem is that Hikaru can simply ignore him because g5 is protected by all of black's king side pawns. But Levan could try it anyway, just to try to, you know, spice mm -hmm. things up as much as possible. Yeah. Definitely ask Hikaru what he wants to do about that. Whoa. Okay, now B5. Does he want B4 here? That's the big question. B4, and has he fully considered A4? Another dilemma for Nakamura, who's down to 40 seconds. Didn't take him long. He plays A4. Ooh. Careful now. That's Careful very, now. Very Yeah, that's a committal decision. But if White were to try to get after this pawn with King B2, you would be hit by Bishop D3. Yeah, or Bishop F7. Same effect. Levon very patiently maneuvering his knight. And anytime he goes king d4, you can't let this pawn promote. Yeah, knights struggle to play against those rook pawns. So that very is something to keep point. in mind. Very important point. He goes knight d2. How many moves has the knight made this game? <laughs> it is getting its money's worth. He could bring it around to a3, but it has no prospects once it reaches that square. But he allows c5, does he, Carl? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did he allow that? That might have been a slight slip of the mind because king now B4. White just has a pass B pawn. And after King B4, oh. yeah, the A. Does he have A3, uh, Knight B1? A2. Oh my God, it gets super tactical because the bishop defends that pawn. Yeah, I, I'm, I wasn't sure what to make of that. That I mean, you could even lose if, if you didn't calculate precisely. Knight takes F6 and you can't take the C5 pawn because you drop the bishop and the B pawn promotes. Now it takes an H4 maybe? Oh, get another pawn rolling. He gets d7 with check, and the knight's going to move back to e5 with tempo. I think Levon's winning now. Yeah, no king c6. No, this is totally winning. Just f5. f5 wins on the spot. You're not stopping the pawns. What's he doing? I think He's... this is still f5. within the margins. Yeah, f5, and that's it. Whoa. I, I feel like, Jeffrey, even at the very end, if Hikaru had somehow moved his bishop back, maybe it wasn't that easy. But mm. what an end game by Levon. I mean, big round of applause for what he just managed to do. And Huge you win were there. Calling it the whole way, Jeffrey. I was pretty dismissive, but you could sense that there was juice to be squeezed there. Yeah, I mean, it, those kinds of end games are always not easy because you simply have to sit and wait, and your opponents can exhaust all of the options they have on the table. And Levon did just that. He was also Johnny in the spot when Ikara allowed the 
uh, B pawn break. Yeah, yeah, C5. That was that was the the turning point. Icaro should have kept his king on D6, and looks like there would be no way to make progress. But in any case, it's still a one point lead for Nakamura, and we have yet another Queen's Gambit accepted structure. This one with the Queen still on the board and an early A5 B5, which we had talked about in the previous game. Wow, Rook C5, not the most difficult <laughs> move I've seen. Seems like he's provoking. Yeah, yeah, he's provoking it to be attacked for whatever reason. Does he want some sort of queen a8, rook fc8 setup? But that would run into bishop a3, at least in the existing uh -oh. position. But yeah, maybe that is what he had in mind before. And <laughs> now he's like, wait a second, why did I put my rook there? Moves it back. Yeah, rook, yeah, rook c7 is much more standard, and now I think he does want the queen a8. And then I said, like, give me that parking spot. She does. We discussed this in the last Hikaru White game, which is the fight for the C6 square. So maybe you bring around the other knight, knight 2 f3. Knight e5, that... knight c6. Exactly. Yes. So knight f3 is very likely here. I agree. See, that rhymes. And then can black go bishop e7 to d6 to curtail the knight's path? Right, I think you probably have to because, like, uh, the only other move to deal with that would be knight of d7. But after cd5, bishop d5, bishop c4, I think white would be getting too many tempos. So, yeah, after bishop d6, maybe I take on d5 anyway. Uh huh. So you open the c file, I take back with my bishop, I guess. And I still like this move, bishop c4. Yeah, a trade of bishops is out of the question, just so people realize why. And let's pull up an analysis board real fast. Instructive positional point. You always want to identify which pieces you want to trade and which you want to leave on the board. And here, a lot of that has to do with square control. White get, gains control of this massive outpost on c6, and knight c6 comes with great effect. Now, incidentally, uh, in this position, black can, of course, drop the bishop back to b7. But still, then white improves the positioning of his pieces. Anyways, knight 2 f3, dc, and knight e5. So the player is taking a different path. And Jeffrey, this is this looks really scary for black. Oh, it looks terrifying. I mean, imagine a knight coming on c6. That might be just game over. And white temporarily sacrifices a pawn. But the c4 it is just not going anywhere. So Hikaru is certainly not worried about that. Uh, meanwhile... What exactly can Levon do? Like, queen d5 would be a double attack, but white would simply play an a on c6, so that amounts to nothing. Great point. Queen a8, so with quite a bit of delay, he plays the move we thought he might play earlier, but again, knight c6. Oh. And this is starting to look real dicey for black. Did he miss knight e5? I think he did, yeah. It's so easy to assume when you capture a piece, your opponent will recapture. But knight e5 just ignoring, and now the knight finds itself on this beautiful square. Um, Levon might have to sack an exchange at some point, but there's just no compensation. I feel like that this is a runaway train at this point, unless he, he finds a way to play knight b 5 to b4 and get this knight off of c6 at all costs. But also, Jeffrey, to add insult to injury, you could imagine a scenario where white takes on e7, and switches over to the queen side with queen g4. Uncontested dark squared bishop could be real dangerous with g7 under fire. Ooh, it really could, yeah. But I think Levon is counting on your knight before idea because after bishop takes c4, knight before, at least Hikaru would then have to decide what to do concretely. Yeah, and maybe he's already thinking about that because rook takes c4 is not out of the question to keep the bishop uh, available for bishop f3. That could be, a case could be made for that as well, perhaps. Right. Yeah, so definitely taking his time here. If he plays accurately, he's going to have an overwhelming advantage. So a yeah. nice moment by Hikaru to spend uh, important, important clock. And a skill that he possesses in the extreme, just knowing when to slow down, the sense of when the critical moment has arised. And a critical moment is, is I think, best defined as a moment where the value of making the correct decision increases where there's really only one move that, let's say, keeps the advantage or keeps equality. And Hikaru senses it, but you don't want to take too long. He's down to two and a half minutes. Right, you don't. I was trying to make this line work. Bishop takes c4, knight b4, knight e7, rook e7, queen d6. 
mm-hmm. going for like some sharp complications with double attack on e7 and b6. But I mean, black would have the move queen d8 there, so far from clear. So rook takes c4 is Hikaru's choice, and knight b4 is not is not technically forced. I mean, you could throw in a move like bishop to f6 to try to you know fight off on the other side. But I don't know. I mean, Hikaru will still probably go bishop f3 there. And I'm I'm just worried that this, you know, one more misstep is going to send Black's position into a tailspin. For sure, yeah. Black is on edge as it is. And it's a struggle to find moves. Like, bishop 6, very natural, I would agree. But after bishop f3, don't know how to continue. So he plays f6. Oh, big move. And, okay, so I guess he's saying after knight d3, I'm simply going to take on c6 twice, and you can show me what you got. No, that is a pawn. e6 is weak, but it's not easy to attack. I feel like Ikara should search for something tactical here, but but what exactly? I was even thinking about some crazy moves, like bishop g4 oh, and rook bishop takes g4 c5. And bishop... Wait a or second. Bishop b6. I really, I really like your move, bishop g4. Let's pull up a board real fast. Bishop g4... This must be what he's calculating. And he's played it. And the idea is F takes C5, Bishop E6, Knight E6. None of this has happened yet. He has played Bishop G4, and Levon is thinking. And what do you make of this position, Jeffrey? The Knight is hanging. The eval bar is skeptical, but White's just like all over him after Bishop E5. All the pieces would be streaming in. You'd have two pawns. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and there's Knight E7 check. I don't know what the move is here. Okay, let's, let's settle in and wait for this position to be reached, because I think it will be. Well, there Back is the another board. option. After f5, yep. you could take on c5 too. Right. Sacking the exchange and then coming around and taking d5. There it is. It's played. Whoa. Oh my goodness. A desperado. Ho oh, ho. Open the f file. This is getting chaotic. It's out of control. What if you... So if you take on oh e6, gosh. e8, basically Levon is saying that he's, he's just gotten a pawn out of this. Oh my goodness, this position should come with a complimentary aspirin. I mean, this is this is crazy. Head spinning position. He takes e7 first. But now, Jeffrey, the pawn on e6 is protected, and I feel like Hikaru is getting the shorter end of the stick here. Whoa! Oh Another my Another crazy goodness. move. Queen d6 he's Queen found. Queen d6. Hitting the so rook. So many counterattacks by both players. Both of White's rooks are hanging. The bishop is hanging. G2 is hanging. It can be captured. This is a move that should be considered going for checkmate. I mean, there are a lot of things to be considered right now. Um, I will say, apparently the best move is queen e8. I was actually looking at this, yeah. Because if you simply uh, defend on e7, e6, white doesn't have any other threats. Like, the problem still exists. Both of your rooks are hanging, not to mention the bishop on g4 and the pawn on g2. So will he... Find this cool, complicated move, Queen E8. Such a cool move. It should be pointed out that if you take the rook and then take the bishop and you say, I'm up a piece, white recaptures on E6, forking the king and the knight. So this is Hikaru's main idea. He's put the queen oh. one square short, but this still looks good, to me at least. It could lead to an endgame where white is an exchange down with some compensation. Right, it's a very similar idea. Um, what sort of benefits does Hikaru have, like, if you take on e6, king h8. Yep. Now you take d8, and you take e3, and you move your bishop, and you say, hey, I've got the two bishops, I've got a big pawn on b5, and I've got the idea of bishop c3. I like Ikaru's position from a practical standpoint. Huh, and there is this annoying back rank problem. So rook d2 would be very ideal for Levon, but he's uh-huh. got to clear the back rank first. And maybe he overlooked that detail. What about bishop d5 here? To go for some... Oh, no, you can't play it. Because takes in rook f8 again. Exactly. So he makes love, but now bishop c3. Bishop b4. You could have a rep... No, bishop a5, he wants rook to a8 to win the pawn back on a4. Great move by Levon. Yes, and I think that works. Because even if white gets in rook f8, you don't have a clear follow-up. The king can escape through so... g6, even if bishop g8 happens. Mm-hmm. Or just keeping things under control with rook c1. I'm getting worried for Levon here once again. Such a tricky position here for both sides to navigate. And notice how Hikaru keeps all the infiltration squares protected by the two bishops. All three squares are under control. Ten seconds on Levon's clock. 
Yeah, he doesn't want to allow a rook trade. Super complex. Just got to start H4. moving here. King g6. It's getting crazy against c4. h5. What's going on? The bishop's dancing around. a5 is well, captured there, now. I feel like it can be captured. Yeah, there's no more rook a8 with the bishop on f3. No, Levon's losing control of this. Now b6 is going to happen. Oh, man. No, the pawn just rumbling forward, and the bishops are just monsters in this position. G6, maybe there's still bishop e4. Icaro playing it slowly, maybe trying to involve his king. So does Levon. Eight, rook h1, though. Uh-oh. Oh, that's rook a h5, tough rook thing to do with. Oh, now just rook h5. Yeah. And, and bishop, bishop h5. h5. Picks off the rook. You can't even get the bishop in return, and there's checkmate on h5. Unreal. <laughs> oh, my God. What a brutal <laughs> sequence there by Hikaru. That is just... That I just have no words for that. I have no words for that. What did we just see? I mean, he found all of those moves instantly. You also called it. You were there. But, geez, I mean, so hard to keep up with him down, down to seconds. Yeah, and Levon kind of still reeling from that game. They're taking their sweet time to rematch. This next game will be the final one of the segment. And Queen D8, I guess that was the practical culprit. That end game. JX with the amount of weaknesses that Black had was incredibly hard to defend. And also you're playing Kikaro. Oh man, I mean, chess is so cruel. Just one square away. If he had played Queen E8, he would have been nearly winning. But instead, after Queen D8, that was so instructive how Hikaru didn't allow the rook trade down exchange, which was the key. He played Bishop C3, stopping infiltration on D2, followed by Bishop E2, stopping infiltration on D1. And after that, it was mm -hmm. just so practically hard for Black. And I'm just showing this on the board. The player's uh, just fixing some issues here. Uh, but this gives us an opportunity to just quickly instant replay what happened there. I, a thing that people take for granted, Jeffrey, is, is moves like bishop e2 and moves like h4. How many people would just take on a5 or play b6 or do something drastic and make a weakness? Not Hikaru. He keeps the tension so well until it's time to pounce. He's like Floyd Mayweather in the ring. He's defensive. But then the moment you make a weakness, you expose yourself, he pounces mercilessly. I mean, so well put. Yeah, just insanely good at those kinds of positions and exactly how you said, just waiting for the right moment to strike. Okay, so a, a big moment for Levon. He's got white. He's got to try to make something out of this, out of the white pieces here. And Yukaru resorting to a very solid choice. Queen's Gambit declined. And an incredibly well-studied variation with bishop f4. Yeah, for black, you have a few options. I believe you can throw in a bishop e4 check. You can also play c5. Um, it's uh, there, He had a game against Fabi from a grand chess tour, I remember. I, I don't quite recall if it was bishop e4 or c5. But in any case, we are going to see some sort of IQP come on the board. So I never know, Jeffrey, if white should take on c5 or allow the move c4. I feel like it really depends on the position. Okay, there's our answer. <laughs> and will Hikaru play c4? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a big question. Like, c4, bishop, c2. We are going to mm -hmm. see it. And now, uh, e4, a very typical classic. move here, counterattacking in the center. So classic. And you can't really take because the rook gets trapped. So now I've seen people in knight f6, e5, knight e4 comes to mind. You can also play bishop b7. But Levon will drive the pawn to e5, and that's always a good thing for white. Right, I'm, I'm not slightly, so convinced. Yeah, I don't know. It's a hard position to evaluate, really. Like, I'm also worried that the knight on e4 could become vulnerable. Although, knight d2 is interesting, just sort of wanting to trade. And at some point, maybe Levon wants to advance f4, f5. He has to, because Hikaru's plan is so clear-cut. b4, rook c8, c3. So bishop to e6 here, I think Levon will drop his bishop back. And Hikaru could also try to meet f4 with f5. You could get an on Passan, and things could get spicy and dicey on the king side. I like Hikaru's position, though, and he doesn't even play bishop e6. He just goes straight for the throat on the, king's, on the queen side. Yeah, I think he is going to have your long-term uh, plan meeting f4 with f5 later on. And he says, why should I develop the bishop? I also noticed, yeah, with the move a5, you have this idea to sometimes play rook a6, where the rook sort of controls the six ring. A fantastic idea. We saw that in, in the last round of the candidates in Duda Nepomnishi. It's, it's actually a pretty widespread idea. So good call there. B3. Oh, big move by Levon, allowing 
a protected passer on the third rank, but White gets the battery going and provoke provokes a weakness. What do you make of that? Right. That would that would be a permanent protected pass response either for the rest of the game, essentially. And I think Levon is banking on the fact that he's gonna keep as many pieces on the board as he can, because in an end game, that could be a significant issue. But with pieces, maybe Vishponsi too can keep it at bay. And it's interesting that Ikara has decided to keep the tension, but now White is actually threatening BC. And I think Levon should maybe play BC. Okay. Oh, yeah. I feel DC, like this... there was D5. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And this doesn't feel the most ideal for Ikara, though it certainly still is interesting. Well, he's got the C file. He's got the pawn majority. And I think he's going to have a rook established on C3. But after Queen B5, ah, Queen A8 with the idea of Rook B8 is nice. Get off me. And then the queen can support the A4 pawn push. Ikara's pieces are so well placed here. Oh, man. That was actually a really important detail, which I believe Levon missed. Yep. Because and now... Mm -hmm. I mean, I was going to say, how do you deal with, with Rook B8? Like, you don't want to put that queen on A4. Your queen would simply be trapped. But if you allow A4, then your bishop becomes trapped. Oh, it really is? Because black dominates the C-file. And Levon has not gotten off the ground at all on the king side. I mean, he's got zero things going for himself on the other flank. This actually might, this, this might be borderline losing for white. I really don't see a good move. Maybe, I guess you play bishop a4, no, but then rook a3. I like bishop d2, force the rook off. At least give yourself a little bit of breathing room on the, on the queen side. But hold on, after rook b8, where do you intend on fleeing your queen? Queen e2? Wait a I... minute, there's... Is there? No, a4, bishop, c3, a, b. I don't think it's quite enough. But you could and then potentially a? just drop your rook back here. And you're saying that there's no good way to... He's played a4. But He's how does this it. work? I, oh. I just feel like the long-term problems with the connect, connected passers are going are gonna to haunt white. Oh my god, you're right. I, I completely misvalued this. I thought white would be able to just block the pawns with his bishop. But, I mean, you're completely tied down. He is, and Lawan desperately seeking activity, but it's just bishop a3, and I, it's only a matter of time before Hikaru uses his heavy pieces and the bishops to pry, to just dis, disrupt the blockade. And once the pawns get going, white is toast. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That comment is spot on. It really was like a positional rook sacrifice, but you have two pawns that are nearly promoted, and I mean, here, lots of Good options uh, for Hikaru. I like Bishop A3. And White's obviously not going to react, but that added strain on White's position. The Queen's going to come up to A5, and there's just so many avenues and angles that White has to protect. I, I don't see this happening for Levon. And that Bishop on E6 does such a good job of stopping any sort of nonsense that White would try to, try to do. Fantastic point. It protects F7. There's no Queen F3. Levon desperately trying to drum up some counterplay but it's just so slow yeah queen a5 oh, does this God. just win on the spot because you attack both both rooks well there's rook c1 but it's like it feels like he cars one good move away from pushing white's blockade away. i have this idea bishop f5 bishop c2 yeah but then you have to watch for e6 he's gonna go for it anyway okay maybe h5 now I think you have to try at h5 and meet bishop d2 with some bishop a3 and e6 and pray that there's something there. It almost feels like Ikaros calculated this like years ago. <laughs> oh, he just takes it. Oh, he's played e6 first. And now he plays h5. Okay, still some hope here if you get the move h6 in. Yeah, this is far from totally being over. Ikaro just keeps his foot on the gas pedal, but after h6... I think he just wants bishop f8. He wants to eliminate the pawn. Oh, so clinical that would be. Yeah, you, you just disrupt any sort of queen e5 ideas. But queen e3 keeps the pawn alive. White's life hinges on his ability to keep this pawn on the board. And he's also attacking b3, might I add. Uh-huh. Now, wait a second. Levon looking a little bit better here. He, I wouldn't say he's back in business, but Hikaru needs to keep his composure here. Okay, there is a move A1, which would win the bishop, but I don't know if 
that's the kind of trade i mean that you want oh, to that's a lovely with. tactic though promote force the bishop back and then trap it with the other pawn but yeah i mean the yeah. question would be do you consider those the a and b pawns to be worth more than that bishop yeah and hikaru says i just want to keep the tension rook e to c1 comes to mind that threatens rook c6 and maybe a sack on e6 yeah i think that is and levon plays it okay so hikaru preemptively moves the bishop back to f5 it's been here before hang and... on what if i go so rook c6 just move the queen away i guess i guess queen d8 and maybe queen h4 uh -huh, that, that, pawn. that feels a little bit airy after queen e5. Uh, uh -huh. when when do you play queen e5? Because you still have to keep an eye on the h6 pawn. Yeah, that's a good question. Oh yeah, I forgot that that pawn. That that actually is debilitating. The fact that you have to keep the queen on e3. Right, you're just totally tied down. So after yeah, I do like queen d8 threatening queen h4, and white needs to come up with something in the meantime. Maybe rook back to c3, go after the b-pawn. Uh, Queen d is such a Hikaru move. He just sort of uses both sides of the board. And so I effectively. I really see a move. Maybe just g3. I mean, maybe you got to stop Queen h4. He does it another way. Mm -hmm. and Three seconds for Nakamura. Yeah, I mean, this is not exactly the easiest position to play with low time. And the eval bar is so misleading. I mean, minus four, yes, it's winning, but so many things to keep track of if you're Hikaru. Rook d7. I'm getting concerned about the back rank, though. He vacates it. Maybe g4, g5, just to take the stress off the queen. Oh, excellent idea. Ship c2 is nice. Okay, g5, I think. But that doesn't lead anywhere. You don't have any infiltration squares. Right, the bishop on f8 does such a good job. But a good move by Levon. He just keeps, you know, keeps the, the web weaved around black's pieces. And is there rookie five? Apparently there was, move. yeah, there was some chances indicated by the evil bar, but I didn't see it. Queen a8. Oh, now, now there's rookie seven oh, and rook this b6. Is close. Now there's rookie seven and rook oh b6. My. And if you promote, you just ignore? You take it, you go king g2, and the combined threats of the eighth rank check and the infiltration to g7 give white enough counterplay, but that's so hard to see. But he might find it because if not, there's really nothing else you can do. Queen A is lining up a double attack. You attack on the rook and you're threatening to promote. Do not go bishop A1. That's way too... Oh, yeah, the rook also hangs. So you basically have to take on E7. Oh! He, he missed it, but... Rook E7... Where there's white is winning now. Still rook B7, right? Oh! And if bishop D6, you drop F7 with mate. But Levon playing too slowly. I think he should still have this, like... I mean, Carl only 10 seconds to deal with that rook... I mean, just... Rook b7. This on is black also square. good. And queen c7 comes. Black has made no progress on the queen side. Queen f6. Now, can you just go queen no. f6? Queen takes h6. Again, oh, queen f7 is made. Oh, you don't want to drop that. No, but queen Wait a f7 second. was made. Queen a... Oh, queen h6. It. Now queen h6 was a move. And suddenly it's game on. Queen f6 ended the game on the spot for Levon. Now it's anybody's game again, as you said. And maybe a perpetual? So check. King G3. G3. He goes F3 instead. I think there's going to be a perpetual. Oh my god, that's insane. Oh, big missed opportunity there at the end for Levon. And he's got to avoid flagging. Well, what if I... Oh yeah, he only has two seconds, I just realized. Oh, he's playing for it though. But he's walking on run. hot coals. In C3. He's running away. King D2, Queen C2, King E3. And oh my god, no more checks. checks. Oh Great. my god. It's winning. How did he do that? Wait a second. It's not over yet. King E7. Oh, he King cars E7, gonna win the pawn left. back. Oh my <gasps> god. Levon might lose this. How many pawns is this? Five pawns for a rook. You don't see oh, that. Levon, Levon gave away his pawn and Hikaru's playing for a win now after E3. He's gonna win. Oh, this Hikaru's is... gonna win. What are we witnessing? Holy sh... Oh my god. In D3. Probably E2 or... Wait a second. Oh. Oh, Levon's going to... I still can't flag. process this. He's going to flag. Oh, yeah, there's just no time, but the pawns were promoting. No freaking way. No way we just saw that. 
I mean, I'm at a loss for no words. Way. Like that that game was just a roller coaster of emotions. And all Levon had to do, I mean, forget everything else that happened. This is actually not easy. He has to find the crazy G5. And the point is that Black is in Zugzwang. Black is just in Zugzwang. There are no moves. But Levon, he missed the check on C5 because he thought Black has to go King E7, and now you take the bishop. But Karo manages to win the pawn and keep the bishop on the board. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Man, and we see Levon. I feel like his expression says it all. Like he, he can't believe it himself. And he came back from a losing position in the opening, Jeffrey. It was incredible play. He was so resilient. But against Hikaru, I mean, it just the guy just doesn't die. And he keeps his foot on the gas pedal even when he's totally lost. It's five and a half, two and a half. Holy mackerel. Really? Yeah, I mean, we could have been easily seeing a different tune had Levon won the game and put it within one. But now it is a three-point margin. Um I feel like Smarter Chess might have actually predicted this. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see if Levon can can hit hit it back, hit him back. We will indeed. It's the perfect time for a for a break as the players transition to the three plus one segment. But uh, we wanted to first remind you that holiday bots are back. Challenge challenge bots at any level from a seven hundred rated Powder the Snowman to a twenty one hundred rated Mrs. Klaus. Can you stop her rise to the Grandmaster title? Don't miss your chance to beat all of the holiday bots before the year ends. Chess.com slash play slash computer has it all. Or drop exclam holiday in the chat for the link. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing a big dose of crazy and a big dose of nasty from Hikaru Nakamura. Will Levon manage to come back from the three-point deficit as the three-plus-one segment kicks off? We will find out on the other end of this short break. What is this? This is duck chess, you guys. This is a new variant. It's called duck chess. Chess, but with a duck. Quack, quack. How to play duck chess. The duck is a brick. Pieces cannot move through the square occupied by the duck. Click on a square to place the duck. <laughs> oh, you put the duck to prevent moves of opponent, not yourself. <laughs> yeah, so basically you do this and this cannot move. I'm gonna go knight f6 and I'm gonna put the duck in the most inconvenient place for my opponent to move. No bishop, no queen, so no Londons can permanently stop the London. Capture the opponent's king to win. Oh, wow. Oh, there's no stalemate. The still, wait, there is stalemate. But the stalemated player wins. Ooh, if only that was real chess. <laughs> I think I'm getting the hang of this game now. I think, I'm, I think I actually am getting the hang of it. I think this works. Oh, that's a horrible blunder. Oh my God, I just blundered. I have to move something else first, then dark, and knight will take my king. This is the best way to lose the dark chess. Those are some real bullet skills right there, boys. This is the first time winning duck chess. That's so exciting. Oh, no! No, 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 no! Mouse slip! No, 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 no! I won! Yeah! Duck chess champion! Give me those points, baby!
storm is brewing. <gasps> Dimitri on Jake. Drake is a wizard. Within the Tempest, the best have come to test their skills and brave the storm. <gasps> oh, he missed it. Oh, he allowed a drop. <gasps> oh, my goodness. The wheels, the wheels have come that, off. That could be the match. For some, this is familiar ground. Oh, my goodness. Night D8. Whoa. One and second. One second. Move, move. Oh, my God. Like it's three. What a tactic. This is insane. Oh, look at Fabi. Exhausting every last resource. The battles will be electric. Hey, seven main. You you can't main. Stop main. Oh my god, it didn't happen. The moves will be fast. It's game over. It's winning. Oh my god. Yes, it is. He's gonna make a queen. The stakes will be high. He just grabs his head. He can't believe it. He just oh, gave man. away the pawn. The 2022 Speed Chess Championship is now. Fasten your speed belts, my friends. We're in for a wild ride. The many facial expressions of one Hikaru Nakamura, the pineapple in the background, the YouTube awards on the shelf. We're all familiar with his background and, of course, the orange walls to top it all off. Hikaru Nakamura leads the Speed Chess Championship round of eight matchup against Levon Aroni in five and a half, two and a half, commentating alongside GM Jeffrey Zhang. Jeffrey Zhang, as we look at Hikaru Nakamura's matchup card, I mean, we've talked about every aspect of his blitz at strength, you know, what more needs to be said? Yeah, not much, honestly. And those insights right there, I think they say a lot. It's simple, but true. I mean, we saw it from that last game, accurate and fast. When, I mean, when you get low on time against a curl, he just finds every nasty little trick there at the end to try and exploit your time trouble. And in that position, it looked like he was a dead duck, but he found a way and, I mean, it's a really unfortunate end to that five-minute segment, but now Levon needs to sort of lock in and try his best to uh, make this a match. I can't take my eyes off of the SEC score. I mean, 22-2. and two. I talked about Floyd Mayweather. Uh, this is Floyd Mayweather-like from Hikaru. And indeed, the score, five and a half, two and a half. After the five-plus-one segment, we will now have an hour of three-plus-one. Listen, I mean, these games have all been very competitive. I, I can't say that Levon has gotten blown off the board in any of the games. But, Jeffrey, I mean, the amount of times that the game has come down to five seconds for both players, ten seconds for both players, we talk about it again and again. Hikaru is just unstoppable in those situations, and the last game was a case in point. Yeah, it's so, so tough to drag him down. I mean, just to get him into trouble to begin with is not easy. But then that phase of forcing him to really give it up, just so tough. I mean, what more can you say? Yeah, no, absolutely crazy. Levon has a comeback to mount here, but he's got plenty of time to do it. And can he manage the speed? The three plus one segment is the time that Hikaru has traditionally pulled away from a lot of these speed chess championship matches. Um, he defeated Paravian by 12 points and once Hikaru gets into the zone, once he starts winning, I mean, nobody, not even God himself, can stop him. All right, speed belts fastened. Hikaru has the white pieces in the first game and a very system, S8 by Nakamura. He's played all sorts of offbeat D4 openings. Yeah, and I think also we should mention that Levon did open with G6 on move two. He had been playing QJ, but being down three points in the match, I think he wants to spice things up a little bit with that keen sides Fianchetto. Indeed, and a sensible strategy. But Hikaru keeping it very solid. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a chameleon opening in that it can be both tactical and positional depending on where white castles. You can play it with an early H4. I mean, not anymore. Or you can play it very in very tame fashion by castle and kingside. It looks like Hikaru is opting for the latter approach. Right, it does seem that way. I guess he is going to just make a short castle here. And have a very slow build up to this one. Indeed. And e4. e4 is on the board. Looks pretty pleasant for white at first glance. But there's also all sorts of ways to harass white's center. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of that knight on c3. You typically want to protect that d4 pawn with a c2, c3. So slightly unusual placement of the white knights here early on. 
Yeah, you would kill for a pawn on c3. Then you would get a very typical Karakhan type structure. As it stands, black has long-term pressure on d4. But Ikara trying to reshuffle his knights, prevent the bishop from coming out. It's just a, sort of a normal position so far. Hard to make any hard and fast conclusions. Yeah, the knight c5. Oh, bishop drops back all Whoa. the way to c1. I was not <laughs> expecting that. Undeveloping. Um, and yeah, I mean, bishop h4, far more natural, but he's going to move <laughs> that bishop around like a yo-yo, but he's about to be hit with knight f5. And maybe bishop f4, bishop b5. <laughs> Just keep on theme. No, but that drops d4. Uh... Yeah, for a little bit too conventional, I feel, from Ikaro. And after knight f5, I guess he's going to just allow uh, Levon to take his bishop here. Maybe nothing better than c3. Yeah, and if I'm Levon, I'm not rushing to take on e3, but he just rushed to take on e3. And he's going to mount long-term pressure on this very tender e3 pawn, h5, bishop h6. Good stuff for Levon. Great play so far. I love that idea. He's also got a potential e5 lurking to further mm -hmm. blast that center, maybe now. There it is. Good call. And at this point, you're starting to think about, you know, tactics. It's, it's, pre, it's too early for anything drastic here. So maybe a, a tame move like queen e7 is what the doctor ordered. Yeah, Not queen e7. Totally sure. I also think at some point b6, because that knight on c5 does prevent me from developing the bishop. So I might want to kick that knight out. But yeah, he does play your queen e7 move. I think b6 might have been more accurate. Now Hikaru will probably move this bishop away from the x-ray. And he does. Bishop g4, maybe just continue developing. Yeah, bishop g4, just connect rooks with rook d8. Looks like a very sound approach. And at some point, there might be an ed4 with knight e3. Not yet because of the f7 point, but something to keep an eye out for. And white shouldn't rush with e4. I think a lot of people would be tempted by this move, but that yields the f4 square. It loosens the d4 pawn. So Hikaru has to tread a lot more carefully here as he prepares to involve the rook in the defensive effort. I like the way he's handling the defensive task so far. Indeed. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think both sides are playing this pretty naturally. I feel like we'll see a rook ad8, then we'll follow with rook ae1. And that's when the real battle will start. But already look at the clock. Levon down 40 seconds and... You know, Hikaru's just going to rinse and repeat, get a complicated position, milk his clock down, and force Levon to prove it in a time scramble. Oh, yeah, I'm getting worried for him. The move I wanted to play was bishop f6 to uh -huh. try and kick that knight on g5 out, but mm -hmm. white would swing over the other knight, in that case, I think, with knight c4, so I wouldn't really be getting rid of that knight. Yeah, that knight, both knights are just irritants here. He goes the other way, which I like, bishop to h6 which doesn't preclude, strictly speaking, the possibility of knight c4, but that move no longer comes with tempo. So maybe it's best bet for Hikaru is to just sack the pawn on g5, but, but how is he going to do that exactly? Right, and more importantly, with bishop h6, you reserve the option to play f6. It's very important because the knight, I mean, you wouldn't want to move it away um, opening up black's bishop. So sack the pawn he does. Technically not a sack, because b7 will hang in the end, but I, I don't know if he's gonna if he's planning to capture that pawn. Right, you don't necessarily have to jump the gun. He takes an e4, Wait, it doesn't feel takes right Takes rook to f6. Me. Takes an, yeah, this... Just something about it. Agreed. Um, I think rook f6 solves black white's problems. Okay, yeah, you, your knight gets pushed away, but that rook is a monster. Queen f2... And you really f1. can't attack the g5 pawn, so white's gonna be able to hold on to this clamp. Practically, I almost think the white is better. There's also the long-term idea of pushing c4 and disrupting the pawn chain, so maybe knight d2 at some point. Exactly. He's going to at least try and block the f5 with bishop f5. Okay, so an end game. And Hikaru S carrying out the idea, but you don't want to go c4 prematurely and give up the c-file. Right, well, that king is starting to walk in. Now... You would strike with c4 here. Pairs it with b3. But now a forced rook trade. Otherwise, black's rook would have infiltrated to f2. And looks like Levon 
is the I one like, with his foot on the gas pedal here. Ooh, B4 is committal. Now after D4, move. You're lying pass bonds on both sides of the board. But now C5. I think could, yeah, I, I'm, I'm wondering why not C5. He finally plays it. Levon maybe should have taken on C4, but that was very hard to evaluate. Now it's a two result. It's a three result game. I have a feeling that both sides are going to be kind of solid. Yeah, after G3, H3, looks like a fortress because black, the Black King simply can't come around. And Hikaru could try some shenanigans with his knights. Now BC again is possible, and then King E5. Wait a minute. Oh, he is initiating some serious complications. And he, e Levon doesn't have a minute. Oh, but C6, knight E2. Oh, he gets around to D4. He blockades the pawn. He defends B5. And Levon can keep hunting with his king, though. Still very tricky for both sides. Uh-oh. I think it might be getting dicey for Hikaru. Breaking up the pawn chain, but allowing A4. Yeah, I mean, once you eliminate the A pawn, white shouldn't be at risk, I would say. Draw. But yeah, this... Okay, now both sides will be waiting. Maybe Levon had a chance there, but given the fact that he's got three seconds, cannot blame him for playing this a little bit more conservatively. Yeah, and here Hikaru might milk as much clock as he can. Yeah, somewhat. I mean, one part of it is milking, another part, I feel like he's also thinking about the game in, in the back of his head. This is what strong GMs tend to do. But yeah, they will repeat it now. And Hikaru definitely tends to do that a lot. You, when, when he gets into a bad position over the board, you sometimes see him, you know, assiduously studying his score sheet, you know, trying, and, we, and everybody does that, right? Where exactly did this get away from me? But still, I think a positive result for Nakamura, who was in quite a bit of trouble out of the opening there. I don't know if he's going to repeat that experiment in, in the next couple games. I agree with you. He was on the ropes playing against that Bishop pair in, in the week Epon. But in this game, okay, Levon still going to stick with the Bishop's opening. Uh, I think Hikaru made a slight adjustment because I recall like a Queen H5 landing in that other game. So now something slightly different. And Knight takes E4, typical uh, little tactic here displayed by Hikaru. Whoa, 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 whoa. But D5, this is traditionally considered bad for white. Like you're taught this when you're, you know in your mother's womb, that you don't really want to take back on f7. I think what Levon is banking on is an early d4. He's going to contest the center, but I'm still skeptical, Jeffrey. It does feel like you've just given up a free center with the bishop pair. Like, okay, you did induce king takes f7, but after king j, I'm very happy I've finished my artificial castle, and for sure black is not the one uh, fighting for equality. Yeah, not exactly, you know the best kind of opening play here for Levon. He's fine. Bishop B3. You're just going to see a bunch of normal moves here. But Hikaru is definitely happy with the Bishop pair in an open position. Here I'm wondering, do you take on C6 and play this structure? Or do you just, you know, develop with Rook E1 and, and so on? Yeah, that's that's the million dollar question. I think I think you keep the status quo. I, I've, I think Levon has shown a propensity to doing that so far in this match. Maybe rookie one, bishop b3. The issue with bishop b3 could be this knight maneuver to c4. Mm -hmm. And so potentially to g4 as well. Yeah, yep. I like this move. Okay. And again, keeping the structure. So oh, what, there could c6? be... There could be like a knight h5 jump in the air. Mm-hmm. Very much in play. B6. I wasn't expecting that. I thought he'd go C6. Right. This feels so slow. Like, I understand he wants to feed and keto the bishop, but the bishop would then be removing uh, control over some key squares on the king side. So a little bit unsure. Yeah, bishop E5, and it, it just feels like black center is under a lot of pressure now. And I still like this move, knight h5, because you would be preparing ideas connected with queen g3. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, I mean, that bishop, you know, bishop c7, bishop d6, bishop b5, all sorts of ideas come into play. Yes. Lone pine. Yeah, yeah, queen g3 for sure. Queen g3 is a hard, hard move to refuse, and it's played. Like the way Levon is massaging the position in the first two games, but can he actually... Deliver? Can he? Bring and there's a very, points to the very, table? yeah. I want to say there's a very easy tactic to blunder. If you go queen d7, which makes sense, uh, connecting the rooks, 
There would be this move, bishop d6. First attacking the rook. And after rook f7, I can take on f6 and rook e7. Fantastic point. And that's why Hikaru says, I don't want anything to do with the g-file. But, I mean, of course, bishop d6 is still in play. As is a move like rook to e6. Whew. Just accumulating pressure on the king side. But is there anything concrete? No, but this looks fantastic. Like, if you try and kick me with bishop c8, I just go rook d6. There goes your d5 Ooh. pawn. But otherwise, I mean, I'm just doubling. So will Hikaru go actually queen to f? No, he goes queen f5. Rook takes f6, queen takes h5. Black is balancing on the, uh, on the trapeze here, but it looks like he's getting away with it. Yeah, that would hang on by the skin of their teeth. And f6, rook f6. So you can take the open e5 with rook e1. I don't see anything better. And again, it almost feels like this advantage is starting to slip away from Levon. Unless yeah, you can get a bishop to e5 and attack g7. Right, like even rook f6, queen f6, rook e1, there's just queen f7 followed by rook e8. So I don't know how he did it, but Hikaru seems to be slowly unwinding this position. He makes it look easy. I think queen f7, Levon is cooking up bishop e5. And <gasps> oh, there could also be... No, no, no. Uh -huh. There could be bishop b8. Trap, I mean, oh! in, putting that rook in prison. Try that on for size. That's quite the move. And oops, sorry about that. Bishop e5 played. No, bishop e8 is an idea that I've seen before. He can play it now. How about them apples? And there's oh, also bishop g7, I just realized. What a tactic. Rook e7 at the end. So Hikaru keeps the pieces on the board, but oh, that looks terrible. Oh, that, that looks there? like Bishop takes h6. I thought Jeffrey bishop and queen, queen h4. h4. Exactly, yeah. He has to see those. Queen... Bishop h6 ended the game there. Feels like it did, yeah. Now he's got to grind... This obstacle are Bishop Engins, which at the very least, even if a car loses, he, you know, forces Levon to work and also precious seconds tick off of that mass clock where if he had taken on h6, he would have already won the game. Yeah, no, Bishop h6, he had to see Bishop h6. Opportunities like that, you know, against the car are so few and far between. There's still chances here, maybe rookie seven, but the back rank is a little bit concerning. The pass deep on offers long-term counterplan. Levon has to avoid flagging here. Which is always yeah, a possibility. Only, only 10 cent. King f5. Bishop g3. Very important to cut off that g file. Hikaru's playing for a win, isn't he? <laughs> Bishop a6 and there's a mate threat. Don't take on a7. Oh my god, that's easy to blunder. It, and Bishop a6 threatens mate in one. Wow, Levon sees a mate in one threat. Who would have known? <laughs> but here's the issue. If King g3, there's Bishop f1. D3. D3. Hikaru might win this. Oh my goodness. Oh this no, is... why did he go back? Oh no, d2 and it's over. Rook c1 is unstoppable. He's got no time, yeah. This is no, but this a ridiculous is crazy. Of events. I mean, that went south in a hurry. But it all stemmed from bishop takes h6, which again, you just have to see. But to win that endgame in like five moves, there's only one person on the planet who could do that. Yeah, perhaps... Levon, I mean, if he wasn't rattled before, I feel like you just have to be now. But he'll try his best. He'll try his best to, uh, you know, get back on the saddle and hope to slowly regain his form. It does feel like, you know, the four-point lead sounds overwhelming. Whoa, Bishop d6. That's a fancy little move there. Very fancy. Bishop f6, queen f6 hits the rook in the corner. That's why what black doesn't lose the piece. But it feels like... You know, these games really could go either way. So if, if Levon cleans up his tactics just a little bit, he definitely has his share of chances, and I think he will continue to have chances. Right, and we see a wide variety of intermezzos shown there. I was wondering after Bishop e2, was there another intermezzo that White could have tried with Bishop takes e7? But at any rate, we are stuck with this very modest-looking position here. Pretty solid stuff by both. Yeah, Hikaru just going solid mode. He wants d4, knight d2. Very e aggressively equal position here. Just like as <laughs> equal as it gets. Indeed. We'll see if Levon wants to mix things up. Maybe an a6, b5. Don't really know what that accomplishes, but at least you take some space on the queen side, maybe later an e5, and figure out what to do from there. Yeah, if, if I had to choose a side here, I'd probably take black. Um, it just seems like he's got more exciting prospects in the center as he 
sticks a knight on e4 and follows it up with f5. Very typical across many different openings. Yeah, it is a strange looking little stone wall idea, but he does provoke the move f3, which I'm not sure that really benefits him, but this is sort of just poking and prodding, making making moves in the chess game. <laughs> Yukaro nibbling around the edges with a4. And Levon striking in the center with e5. Now, this move does cause the d5 pawn to be loose, which might be a factor long term. Some sort of night before could come at an inconvenient moment, and you definitely don't want to play e4. Don't even right, say that move around like square. a Soviet, Soviet GM. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Hikaru heading for b5. Yeah, he's got permanent access to the b5 square, and an eventual rook b1 and b4 will follow. So I think he's slowly starting to work Levon in this type of position. He's also up basically a minute, which I haven't even noticed Levon spending more time, but apparently he has. <laughs> so It doesn't feel like he's thinking, but yeah, I mean, just a one minute advantage out of nowhere. There's B4. this one move, and b4 is going to be nasty when it appears. I This is where 0.00, .00 is so misleading because the trend of the game is favoring Hikaru here. He's the one who's clearly calling the shots, but things could go south for White on the king side if he's not careful. Like, you know, there, there's there's stuff going on for Levon as well. Yeah, but I just love the patience here. H3, king, h2, and now b4 comes with a tempo. At some point, Levon's going to get long time again. We've seen this story before, and it feels like it's not going to end well. And Hikaru is on a roll. I mean, he's over two minutes on the clock. He's playing with tremendous confidence at this point. And he was shaky a little bit at the start, but once you give him a couple of wins, you know, it's that runaway train effect, and he's better in the end game. Levon trying to create activity in the center, but the pawn can be defended. And once you defend the pawn, I think you follow that up with a move like knight a3, attacking both the c4 and b7 pawns. Knight I think knight a3, even here, is possible, and it's played. Excellent call. Right, just getting rid of that c pawn. And if you have to go d5, then of course e5 becomes very tender. Rook b4 is possible. Ooh, nice little attack here by Levon. Knight c4 met with knight d3, which is why I think rook b4 is a very good suggestion. And that's a misdirection. You would think knight c4, knight a4, but then the rook has the b4 square. Knight d3 keeps that square controlled. Maybe, yeah, rook b6, okay. So knight takes a4, he wants to bring it back to b4. Right, he's always holding on to his cards. Knight e4, I think, simply move like rook d1, because you have so many ideas here. Knight b5. Also, you could double, I just realized. You could double on the b file, because the moment b7 falls, then the a pawn promotes. Maybe, Lovon, this is very gimmicky, but I'm looking at some idea with h4, try to open up the e file, uh -huh. and go knight g3, setting up some mating threats. I mean, you might have to try at some point. I think you do, because your, your queen side is a lost cause at this point. Yeah, I, Karo choosing between one of many options. You know, like, I feel like rook b1 is the move you want to play. If you can, just rook b1, rook e7. Yeah. Knight b5. Starts with knight b5. Okay, rook d1 defending the pawn, and maybe now's the time to play h4. I would think so. Um, yeah, now he gets a6, undoubling the a pawns. G5. Yeah, Levon trying to muster up some counterplay, but it just seems way too abstract. The king is so safe on h2. Rook b7, though, important move, stopping a5, at least for the time being. Check. Don't go to h4. <laughs> hmm. Okay, Levon's still in it, and his pieces are very active so all of a sudden. Right, that rook is tied down, but now Hikaru Whoa. says, Knight D2. He'll take that. And I think well, he will, and he should, or should There be. is rook D1, though, right? Rook D1, knight E4, knight D6. Rook D7. Oh, now knight that F1, would knight work. Knight E3. Hikaru going all in on the A pawn, perhaps. But again, Levant's clock is down to 10 seconds, and it almost doesn't matter what the evaluation is. Whoops, sorry, knight back to E4. Yeah, a5, knight, c3 is sharp, so he takes on c4. Rook, c6, and c4 comes to mind. The knight is very, very well positioned on e4, but again, even if this is 
objectively equal. The time is going to really dictate what happens here. It's also annoying that the knight dominates the rook. Rook a7 would be such a nice oh, move. It does. So Levon trying to shift it over to a6. But so now there are forks. mating ideas. A oh, I can absolutely. just take on h5. Or maybe rook a7. I feel like that's a Hikaru-esque move. No, he does take on h5. Good call. And oh, and you can't go to e6 because of the four. Oh, and he's got this. And in this ensuing knight endgame with the a and h pawns, it should be too much. No, it's totally winning. And Levon's also flagging. A5, it's over. I mean, it's just a... I mean, it's just a machine. He comes at you in waves. Yeah, and, and it's really... You can't emphasize enough how much... Like, the objective eval at some point does not matter. It equal, plus one, minus one. He just puts so much pressure on you that you might survive, as you said, the first wave, the second wave. But at some point, you're going to collapse. Yeah, and we've seen that featured already numerous times in this match. I guess, I mean, I want to tell Favon, like, if I'm in his corner, just play as fast as you can, trust your instincts. But it's not that easy. Like, the moment you start doing that, you fall apart on the board. So it really, I mean, just facing a monster such as Ikaru is just <laughs> not an enviable task. Yeah, and, and I think we're, we're starting to see that it is, in fact, the 3 plus 1 portion in which Ikaru so often pulls away. I think some people assume that he's just trying to make it to the bullet, but I actually think this time control is where Hikaru is scariest. Not even the bullet. I think in the bullet, you know, you can compete. Hikaru doesn't play quite as much bullet anymore. I mean, obviously still a beast, but three plus one is where, you know, where the party's at for, for Nakamura. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I do remember... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean... You think about Hikaru and his, his bullet play, but we know that Levon, you know, he can, he can fight there himself. Even in their last match, I recall, back in 2018, I think he won the bullet portion. But right now, it's just all about getting out of this blitz, blitz section. Try to finish with some good wins and try and keep your distance. Yeah, I think we, we should remind the, the audience that, you know, Levon did win the bullet segment against Andraken, and he was down by three going into it. So we've also seen Nihal Sarin lose a three-point lead to Anish Giri. Um, so crazy things have happened in the bullet. It just feels like if you're going in with a six-point deficit against Hikaru, he's kind of immune to, you know, the comebacks that we've seen uh, in, in this season's SCC. And, and I do like Levon's position here. It's a symbolic uh -huh. advantage. Got better control of the center. Playing against two bishops, but those bishops aren't exactly shining uh, as white, I think. Just keep the pressure on, you know, play good moves, useful moves. Rook d1, h3, yeah. maybe you bring a knight on c5, but just keep keep it flowing. Keep it flowing, and Levon does keep it flowing by attacking a7. The queen is kind of nicely placed. It's out of the way of the other pieces, and it's directing traffic from, from a distance as it should. Okay. Yeah, at some, point, at some point, I do. Oh, e4, I was wondering, is this premature or not? Because after bishop g4, it was bishop g6. But sometimes you have this uh, slight concern of overextending. I think bishop g4, there might have been e5, the desperado. On f7. Ah, bishop g5, knight g5, nice tactic, yes. But Hikaru just kind of contorting himself. The, the problem, again, is that black lacks targets. So Levon striking while the iron is hot, while black is still passive. I love it. Well, e hang on a doesn't. second, though. What if I pick with the C pawn and E5? No, he goes the other way. And bishop E7. I think he wants C5. Oh, yeah, because if he's able to put that knight on D6, he could actually turn the tables completely. And he could get this Benoni-style counterplay with B5 and C4. So maybe D6. Just give the pawn up, but keep Very the practical. files open. Uh, I'm trying to make a move like H5 work, but it's it might be a bit too speculative. I feel like he's losing his grip on the position, like big time, because he's just not creating threats. His pieces look imposing, but just B5, C4, and Black is so well positioned in the center. That knight on C8 is an integral defensive piece. Truly, really, yeah, and he's got to find an, an idea here, and I just don't see it. A queen e3 would be the move I want to play, but you just run straight into rook e8. And he's going to start slipping on the clock very shortly. 
queen to c3, setting up knight e5. And Hikaru's like, nope. Bishop h5 comes to mind. Oh, bishop h5 is a great move. Takes it. At least here, I mean, white will hold on to this powerful knight on d5. Maybe there's some tactical ideas could occur with rook c5. Rook c5. Great call. Rook c5 is a blunder, Hikaru. He has to see that. And he does. And he does. This is a big moment. I think you now Hikaru at least is on his heels. You have to take advantage. No, this is a must win. Like let's be straightforward. This is a must win, and Levon has just gotten a big chance. Okay, Rook D8. Calm move by Nakamura. He might try to bring his knight out and smoke this pesky knight out of D5. You don't necessarily have to move the rook, although he does. I was gonna suggest something like Queen C2, keeping the tactical ideas alive. Rook C3, now knight B6. Yep. Okay. White actually might not be better here. No, it probably not. Me. I feel like, yeah, somehow that last move sort of ran out of steam. And after the knights get swapped, there's just no... Is there... Oh, there's no bishop h2. Okay. Yeah, the rook hangs in the end. And Levon making space for his rook to move into d3. Still some residual pressure here for white. And he got low on the clock. That number seems to matter. But let's see if Levon can manage to create some chances here. It is tricky. It's not easy to sidestep this pin. Queen I guess you're queen C, queen C7. Oh, queen E7, there was rook takes D6. Exactly. Yeah, so you had to watch out. Okay, bishop C5 and queen takes G3 ideas, but you couldn't play it immediately. Mm -hmm. Just this solid move, bishop B7. And the only way for white, I think, to create chances is to pressure that F7. But one weakness... And now, I mean, with the bishop arriving on f6, there's just nothing you can oh, do. This is ideal setup, and, and if anything, Levon has to be pretty uh, pretty solid here to avoid giving black unnecessary activity. The bishop oh, is like super queen well placed. C2. And now, isn't there a take in queen c4? That's Start exactly what I'm that talking about. Rook e8, and now Hikaru wouldn't, wouldn't accept a draw anymore. He's better. I mean, oh, and there are, just like and that. There are, yeah, and there are g5 ideas too, which exist. I was thinking that too. Very, and now it's a big threat. I think. Oh man. Well, queen c4. There might be rookie eight. Well, Hikaru repeat moves simply and say, "Hey, I'm up five points. I don't need this." I mean, you couldn't blame him at all. But he's gonna fight on doesn't. anyway. And he just—he's also milking the clock. He's got basically no risk at this point. Well, queen b3 and rook b7. I, I honestly oh. would have taken the draw in his shoes there. I guess he's also weak in the g5 score, which is unnecessary. Now, now Levon's starting to dominate. I jinxed him, and he takes h5. Oh, man. A big turnaround here, and another golden opportunity Huge. for Aronian. Another he's got to get falls. it now. Take on a6. Oh, my gosh. Rook b3, nice and solid. Oh, oh but he, he gives up, up rook a8. He blunders a4, and, Le and I think this is very defensible now for Hikaru. Wait, wait a second. Why did he take, take that way? Rook. Rookie eight. Now there's gotta be mate? something. Yeah, that's me. Very stunning decision to take with the rook there. They're gonna abort this one. I'm pretty sure we're at the halfway point. Or maybe are not. we though? <laughs> I guess they're gonna get another. Game. Yeah, we're gonna get another game, folks. But what a turnaround there, Levon. Big kudos. He just kept his foot on the gas pedal even when things were going south for him. Well, I should say that Hikaru did refuse the draw for there, so perhaps a little bit overzealous, but still a four-point lead. Um, but yeah, Hikaru might, be looked, might look to tighten things up now. For sure. I mean, you want to keep it, you want to keep Levon at arm's length here. If you're Hikaru, you don't want to lose another one because we've seen three-point leads erased all SCC long. And Levon, I mean, he's obviously playing for a win here. A Sicilian... And Hikaru making a very fashionable choice. Queen takes d4. I know you've played this a lot, Jeffrey. I've played it as well. It's a dangerous line. Yeah, you often castle long here, doubled the f pawns. And <laughs> Levon doing a kind of funny thing here, putting that bishop on e5, but it could find itself in some trouble. Funny or bad? <laughs> Maybe both. Maybe both, yeah. And. Go like e6, but then knight e3 and knight c4. You soften up the d6 pawn in that case. Yeah, that's positional. e6, I was maybe thinking even about f4 anyway. f4 anyway, wow.
but I liked your approach as well. And now Hikaru basically just has a free hand in the center. Yeah, you still have ideas with G3, F4, and trapping that poor guy on E5. Mm-hmm. <laughs> poor guy, indeed. Ugh. Queen B6, Knight C4. I'm wondering... I might get desperate here with Queen B6, Knight C4, Queen F2, at least eliminate the F pawn. I don't know if I could get away with it, but he does think better. Goes Rook C8. I guess he still has Queen B6 in mind. Yep. I think it's coming coming next if it's allowed. Controlling C4 is Levon to prevent Knight C4, which Shikaru could play here if he wants to, if he wants to beat Black to the punch. But it's miserable for Black. Whoa. Rook F1, okay. Gee, I wonder what his keep... idea is. Well, he just <laughs> wants to keep F2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess Queen B6, now he's got Knight B3. And F2... Mm -hmm very importantly, uh, is protected in this scenario. Yeah, actually, you know, the, the scariest ideas are the ones where you know exactly what your opponent wants to do, and you're basically powerless to stop him. Yeah, wow, this is so subtle, but I don't see a great way. Like, maybe, again, I mean, e6, queen d3, you solve nothing. Maybe, like, a bishop f4 move? Yeah, and already queen takes b7 is actually in the conversation. If you think about a knight appearing on b3, you know, black's play on the queen side isn't isn't guaranteed. So you've got so many enemies at your door if you're Levon. And sinking once again in deep thought here under a minute. It's got to come up with something. This is okay. seven, okay. C3 comes to mind, but maybe that's a little bit weakening. Yeah, queen d3, I guess, is a more methodical way. Mm -hmm. Still f4 is a big threat. Okay, Levon doing a good job of untangling here. Yeah, maybe after knight b3, do you play him like queen c4 after the endgame? He does. Okay. Huh, bishop h6. Maybe black should have traded. I, I really don't know who that favors. All right, I guess right, we're about he to trades find it out. Now. I think at some point you will see the move h4, though, undermining the g pawn, and black could get something going on the king side. Hikaru trying to get his knight going, but Levon restricts him with these six. This is as good as it's looked for black in really since the opening. I agree. Okay, he's going to try. I don't know if he wants double on the c file, or is this Wait. idea to lift the rook through the fifth rank? He goes rook c1. Maybe Levon could have considered capturing and playing h4, but another pawn structure transformation. This one, Jeffrey, I think is in Black's favor because now the d3 pawn, Black can kind of sit on that weakness or not. <laughs> wow, he's going to just play c4, b5. Very direct approach on the queen side. I like bishop. this transferring the bishop. Uh -huh. Is Sicaro going to try to push or is that just yield more squares for the bishop? Probably you can't open that diagonal any further. Wait, but now a4. a4. He a4. allowed a4. Oh, that is a that is just a, a disaster. That it's is it. Very... And Levon grabs his head. Oh, and this might be costly. No, but, and it, wait, but why this? b4? Knight no, c4 ends the game. That was just too much. I wonder if it I mean, was a slip based on the reaction or just an oversight. But yeah, that's tough. I think that was just tilt. I think King C6 would have actually kept him in the game. Right. There he was wasn't no losing need. by any stretch. Yeah. Yeah, there was no need to just give this game away like that. Holy man. smokes. Man, right after picking up a win himself, that's going to be a tough pill to swallow heading into the break. Total momentum destroying game because if he didn't go A5, Black was the one holding all the cards there. That was a winnable game for Levon, and we would have been talking about a three-point match. So a, a two-point swing there. Nine to four, Jeffrey. I mean, this is total domination. Yeah, and this, it is safe to say this game will be aborted. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, it's nine to four, folks. The score should update momentarily. Um, what do we say? Just a classic Kikaro match. He's totally in control here, Jeffrey. And Levon needs just like a crazy 180. 
He really does. Just some, some, you know, I don't, I don't even know what to suggest, but like, can he play some kind of Hikaru like opening just to throw him off early on? I mean, it's really time to find some desperate ideas. But yeah, I mean, just Hikaru is relentless. Yeah, he is, but levon has got a lot of time. He's got 25 minutes to work with, and he needs to start now. But first, the players are going to take a breather, and so will we. Stay with us. We've got more action coming up here at the Speed Chess Championship 2022. Yukar Nakamura versus Levon Aronian continues after this short break. I understand. Ooh, 18 seconds for a black, so not too much time there no. either. Rook c7, a7 is falling. Ah, uh, it is. E4, T he pushes the pawn. This is getting a little messy. Mm -hmm. Takes a knight f1. Knight f3, like knight f3. King, e4. King e4, 91. Move. <laughs> oh my gosh, 0. 0.9 seconds when that move was Jack played. On b1. Move the rook. King, ah, I was going to say king c2 move and run the king. Four. King e2, 94. Takes it. Was it? Takes an a7. Takes it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Takes and right and Knight C2 was Dania. winning. But there was checkmate in one for black after Knight takes G3. Oh my god, that was me. <laughs> and instead he played here and Janelle losing on oh time. Oh my god. A7 wins for white. Oh my gosh.
Levon Aronian's background is a brick wall, and he is facing a brick wall in Hikaru Nakamura here at the 2022 Speed Chess Championship. GM Daniel Naroditsky, GM Jeffrey Zhang, bringing you commentary of this super exciting match. Jeffrey, I mean, as we look at Levon Aronian's player card, you know, his record is 6-6. Six and six. It's been up and down. He needs, you know, a, a just the craziest miracle of all time. Really does, and it's so difficult to even suggest because, I mean, Hikaru, he seems to have an answer for everything. It's like whatever you do, he's always got something up his sleeve, and the SEC uh, back in 2018, I felt, went along a very similar storyline with Hikaru just maintaining control throughout the match. I believe he won the five-minute and three-minute portions there as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's a really tough uh, road ahead. Hikaru just seems relaxed. He's so good at making these minor adjustments to his play to avoid the opponent getting any momentum. I think Levon's best bet is to try to keep this manageable going into the bullet. I, I really think that, you know, a, a five-point comeback in these next 23 minutes is unlikely. If he can get this down to three or four, maybe a repeat of what he did against Andraken is in the cards. We'll see. Okay, he's got the white pieces here and another bishop's opening on the board with uh, an early c65 uh, carried out here by Nakamura. Yeah, slightly different than what we saw in an earlier game. I think Levon played knight g2 there. Hikaru did have the option of taking on c3, playing d5, but this is a more moderate approach with c6. You keep the structure intact, keep your bishop there. And at some point, I guess he'll start with castles or not. Uh, d5... That playable, I guess so, but yeah, in any case, pretty solid start for both. A lot of newer players are tempted by a move like d4 in these positions, but opening up the bishop uh, and creating, you know, ossifying the center isn't always the best approach for black. So you often see uh, black trying to keep the tension in the center, but right now he's got to defend e5, and you can do it with rook e8. You can play bishop g4. Of course, bishop c3 and de is. Uh, also available at certain moments, but not here. Right. I don't necessarily want to give the bishop pair just yet. Goes for bishop g4, which was among your suggestions. After h3, I guess i gives up this one, and now d4. I guess he's saying here we exchange the other bishops. We play this sort of different structure. Uh, it's an interesting one. Yeah, he does play d4, but obviously here it's associated with a very concrete idea. And white cannot castle, so bishop takes before knight d2. Deserves attention, but ultimately, Hikar is going to try to hunt for that bishop. Yeah, we might see that in the coming moves. I do like just dropping back the queen here with queen e2. At some point, if I can eventually get in the move f2, f4, I'm going to be very happy. But it goes a different way here with c3. I quite like Levon's position here. Bishop pair, a lot of mobility in the center. But let's see if he can play in... Uh you know, in, in, in good time as he completes his development with castles and puts his rook on uh, the sort of traditional square to prepare d4. Yeah, I like at least that he's playing fast. This move rook b1, it can never be bad. And these are the kinds of things that I want to see from Levon because, I mean, when he's getting in that sort of immense time trouble, even when he has good positions, he might not have the time to convert. So I like that he's playing quicker now. And another one of Hikaru's many strengths that's perhaps not discussed that often is his ability uh, to avoid further mistakes in a, like, let's say 0 0.3, 0 0.4 type of position. White is slightly better. It's unpleasant. And Hikaru, he sometimes bends, but he almost never breaks. He'll give you a slight advantage from time to time, but then he will just rattle off five, seven perfect moves. And before you know it, you're on the defensive. Oh, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> happened to me myself. And here he goes. On numerous occasions. He's doing it again. B4 is coming, and he's going to carve out this massive square for his knight. Oh, that is a huge idea. Can I at least respond with knight a3? Maybe to meet B4 with knight c4? You can, and I think you might have to. But I can yeah. still go b4 and queen c7. Oh, and if cb4, knight d4, the bishop on c2 would be hanging. But I think I think he has to go for... That anyway, because if you allow b4 with your knight still sitting on b1, then how is the knight even getting out? Like, you never want to take cb. Well, he's not getting his knight out. He, yeah. 
Okay, this is his idea. He's keeping the tension, trying to trade on his own terms. But Hikaru threatening B3. That's easy to miss. <laughs> we missed oh, it! Oh, that would trap the bishop. He missed it. Oh, my God. Oh, no. And Levon's going to resign this one. Oh, and the wheels, the wheels have come off completely in these last two games. They have. Oh, yeah, I jinxed not... him. <laughs> <laughs> he had to go bishop B3 there, stopping that idea. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's all gone sideways. And the reason that was easy to miss is because Rook B8, right? You think of that as a defensive move. Oh, Hikaru's defending the B4 pawn. You forget that the B4 pawn can actually move and it doesn't have to take on C3. And it's a six-point lead for Nakamura, the largest of the match. And he's not stopping here. He's not taking his foot off the gas pedal by any means. Yeah, D4 springing in the center. I think we'll see a D5. He is feeling all the momentum right now. Playing quickly, playing loose, playing freely. Levon needs to stem the bleeding in this game. Now, the thing with the hanging pawns, though, is maybe after queen d7, you... I mean, knight c4 is a move. Oh, there is a knight c4 option. I Sorry to notice. cut you off. <laughs> I no, think no, 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 rightly so. so knight, yeah, c4. knight c4. Bishop f6, bishop f6, bishop b5, knight d6. Knight, knight a3. Three. <laughs> the line goes on there. Queen lay five. Okay, so let's show this on the end. Well, actually, no. Let's wait for his move because we actually might very well get that line. Yep, we will. <laughs> yeah, White has <laughs> to go for it. Otherwise, three? they're down upon you. Yeah. And now, do you go bishop b2 or queen a5 is the question? Because queen a5, queen, queen b3. Five. Ah, queen you defend three. both at the same time. Wow. No, so then you take first and then you go queen a5. But then queen b2. No, queen b2. I think you have to go bishop b2 here for black. <gasps> oh no but then knight move. c4 no no no, knight c4 there but then i take the rook and you take d6 this oh. is unbelievable i mean there's no way hikaru calculated all this now, out but sometimes yeah in that resulting position black could have won another pawn levon going for the sort of positional approach which i love i think this is the way to do it exploiting the awkwardness of white's minor pieces uh-huh yeah i mean he does get Permanent control over the only open file. That has to count for something. High-level positional decision-making by Aronian. Queen c3 could be super unpleasant. I mean, the pieces are mighty discombobulated in the endgame. Very, yeah. And I think Akaro has to drop back here with the bishop on, by, uh, on b5. Oh, my lands. So move like rook c3 is a huge threat. After bishop b2, yeah, I guess... Just queen c3 anyway, and that endgame is, is very unpleasant. Yukaru making kind of a, a slow roll sort of move. Maybe trying to get a knight around to c4. Oh, oh, this is his idea. But now rook c5. I mean... At the very least, yeah, I win that d-pawn. Yeah, and maybe you don't even take it. Maybe yeah, you I don't need ac8. To. Exactly. There's no real need to rush. Although, I mean, if white gets in bishop b3... Ah, a5. There's no time for knight c2. The pieces are just getting put through the meat grinder on the queen side. But don't take d5. Blundering bishop f3. <laughs> so tricky. I would just go rook c8 or maybe even rook b8 to supervise the progress of the pawn. No! Right, just side something and he did it again? Oh, but he Although wants the... to take d2 and take a2. Okay, this time it's not a blunder. Oh, wow. And he'd have three pawns? And after this has been... one b4, yeah, okay. What a lovely idea. You give up the piece, you walk into the trap, but he saw one step ahead. So Hikaru actually keeps his minor pieces alive, but he should be losing here. Yeah, that was, I mean, a very impressive moment there from Levon. I mean, everyone would normally stop ca their calculations once you see Bishop F3, extend it, and see that you're getting not only three pawns, but your domination over the position was really nice. Very instructive. You always have to keep those, keep calculating those lines. Rook C2. I think he's going to go or B4. Right. You don't... I mean, you can just make a pass pawn, but this should be good. I mean, just take on D2, cash in, right? Cash in and then win that 8 bond with Knight C4 in the end. Don't overthink it. Whatever you do, don't let this get into a time scramble. Knight C4. That's the only way things could possibly go wrong here. Okay, 2 also does the huh. job. Yeah, because Hikaru has to waste a tempo creating Luft, which he's going to do. Yeah, okay, a... wait a second. Bishop d5? Well, would run totally into over. rook d3. I think it's... 
I think it's just rook d3 here. You keep everything under control. Bishop e2 and bishop takes b5. Ah, rook, ah, d4. rook d4. Got d4 it. Is so nice. knight takes cap, defends the rook simultaneously. And h6, the very last trap, so this should be good. a3 and b4. And looks like a very convincing win, exactly what the doctor ordered for Levon. But Icaro's going to milk a little bit more time off the clock here, and it's literally never over with him. He's going to go bishop h5. Ah, but he can't go bishop f7 there because of rook to g4 check, unpinning the rook with tempo. Oh, that is a nice subtlety. That's but actually how the game might end. It might end like that. Oh, but no, Icaro spots it. But yeah. <laughs> He's still trying. <laughs> I, I don't go a3. Bishop f7. Knight f7 and a2. Oh, and the pawns decide. Nice finish. Where has this been, Jeffrey, throughout the match? Where has this calculation, this level of sharpness been in the three-minute portion? I don't know, but I guess, I mean, as they say, better late than never. We'll see if he can follow this up with another good performance with white. Is Naka going to milk a minute and a half off? No, but white queen g1. Like, that, obviously, you're up the house, but <laughs> you want to end this a little bit more convincingly. Well, it's made in one. So is Hikaru going to sit this minute out? Is it made in one though? Like e <laughs> four? It's funny oh, that we're oh, discussing. <laughs> it's so funny. That's that hilarious. We're this. <laughs> but to answer your question, F4? yeah. <laughs> the answer is yes. He the answer is here. yes. He's going to yeah. sit out this minute and squeeze. And he sees it. He it took him a while to realize that there's no mate. I think that's what he was thinking about. And Levon is now it's... thinking. I mean, this is precious seconds he's wasting. Still at now, four. It's you... not mate. It's just not mate. Do oh. you think this is like... No, f4... Oh my god, f4, queen e6. f4, queen e6. Yeah, okay, okay. But not queen takes f4 because of king d5. It's like Dina yesterday missing that mate in one with knight takes f2. You know, it's, in the it's easy boxing. to miss mate in yeah, these yeah. positions. Okay. This is fair game. You know, from a, from a match perspective, if you want to maximize your chances of winning, this is what you do, right? Not necessarily what the fans want, but at the end of the day, you're expecting the players to do what they want, what they need to do to win. Right. And psychologically, it makes a lot of sense too, from the standpoint, like you want to take the wind out of the lawn sales uh, in, a, in a sense. Like he just maybe played his best game of the match. This is where you slow him down, maybe annoy him by, I mean, spending all the seconds on your clock. Yeah, and I, I don't agree necessarily with people who say that this is inherently disrespectful or it's dirty. Like, again, a match has its own strategy and has its own techniques, and not all of them are going to be pretty, and not all of them are going to be entertaining for the, for the audience, but it's part of the game, right? And I, I don't think all players would have done that in the SEC. I think Ikaro doesn't need to do it, but I also don't think it should be necessarily held against him. Yeah, certainly something to debate. Now, Levon getting very greedy here. Oh, I thought he was going to take on e5, but that would be a bit too much. Goes knight f3, so there is a double attack there. Knight g5 is the significant one. Yep, and d5 cuts off the bishop. What a crazy opening. Is this prep? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Probably this is just Levon <laughs> trying to play quickly. <laughs> right, e4? yeah. I mean, you never know when, when it comes to these top guys, but I like that Levon is trying to confuse Hikaru, right? He's not playing some sort of mainstream Berlin line that Hikaru would know very well. This is uh, maybe the best attempt to get back into this match. It, I agree. And listen, again, we're talking about a five-point lead here. This isn't a ten-point lead. What Levon needs desperately is a two- or three-game winning streak. And I think his goal should be to get this down to three points. If he can get this down to a three-point deficit, he's been there before. And Hikaru hasn't always been convincing in the bullet segment of the SEC. Paravian scored some victories. I think, you know, this, there's still a chance here. That's right. And I think there's a chance we see the move knight g5, with the idea h6, knight takes <laughs> f7. I was calculating the, the complexities there. Let's go for the more mild approaches, putting the knight in the center. Yes. So what is Hikaru going to do? CD, queen takes d5. You could trade and go rook d8. All right, this is giving me a headache. I'm just going to let Hikaru figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he will go for cd5. Um, there's also, I guess, the pawn is 
in. So you don't necessarily have to resolve the tensions right away. Maybe a knight c5 or a knight c7 is, uh, is a possibility as well. G, Gary 6, trying to kick the queen off of the fifth rank so that you can recapture the pawn. Now, queen e5 here looks like it's out of the question, but maybe it isn't. Uh, that yeah, would it allow rook eight with a tempo, so not the most ideal square, <laughs> I wouldn't think. It is. <laughs> it is out of the question. Okay. So C takes D5 is going to ask White some questions about how he wants to break up the center. Bishop C5 first. Oh, this forces him to play C3, which is not what you want. And I mean, if you allow the knight before and the knight to enter to D3, that's going to be all sorts of havoc to, to wreak. Oh, what a risky move by Levon. Keeping Wait the a center, minute. But very important that he has bishop e3 in response to a check, yes? But I've also got like queen a5 check ideas. So you can combine the two. Whoa, nice. He's going to combine this. Oh, and bishop f5 next. So I think white has to play a move like queen c3, I think. Not give time. Yep. And it doesn't look like Hikaru has a clear follow-up here. We need 7 to bishop f5, but you can just castle. Yeah, I feel like knight b4 was was um, a little bit impulsive. And I think and you, go, on, you go bishop g5 better. here, right? You have to keep the bishop. Keep the bishop pair. Mm -hmm. And if f6, then you can take on d5 with check. That, that looks... And maybe even second exchange on e1. Ooh. That would get very interesting. Um... Of a rook c1, I, I felt like knight e3 would, would be just fine for black. And then bishop e4. Yeah. And that really takes the wind out of white sail. I feel like maybe he had to just gamble with bishop g5. I really don't know if that was sound or not. But compared to this, I, I would take that any day. Whoa, that is a risky move, but I think it works out. Because knight c4, there's bishop takes e4, and the queen is hanging. Mm-hmm. Right, but you could still play knights. I would probably, I mean, queen. actually, it really is optional. I think all roads lead to the same outcome. I feel with this, uh, you know, symmetrical pawn structure and black having the c file and no real weakness. Yeah, let's see what Hikaru comes up with here. Um, queen can move to c7 also. He just drops back to e6, kind of playing it solidly. Uh, I don't see why winning this game, though. It's it's just too symmetrical. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Maybe, I don't know, you try and move like G3. If you can get an H4, might be something. Like a rook E5 or a queen A5, but Haru might be trying something himself on the king side. Queen B1, rook C1, a lot of weak light squares. Levon simply cannot afford to lose this game. Oh, no, absolutely not. At least hold the draw, and you'll get another chance in the three-minute portion to bring it down to four. Uh, is there something to be said? Yeah, about trying to exchange queens here with queen e5. Ah, but there's always rook c1, rook b1, so it's just not... I mean, there's never anything. Yep. Yeah, the queen side pawns are too tender there. A lot of shuffling going on here. It just seems like a totally even endgame. But Hikaru probably still thinking about trying to get Levon down on the clock and playing for a win. Yeah, he might really drag this on a while. Um, see six minutes on the match clock, so I think we will get... We definitely will see another game. But now Levon really thinking about this. I don't know. What is he thinking about? Seven seconds. He's setting himself, setting you... himself up for failure again. Why didn't he take on D5 there simply if he, if he was worried? Yeah, because that's an insta draw. I guess. Or and White's not even risking there now. Hikaru has some pressure going on. Oh the man, side. I'm Rook getting concerned. Rook C one. Okay, you got you've got Rook E one back. Probably have to. Now we saw Hikaru overzealous a couple of games ago. He can make a draw here in a variety of ways, but I think once again he's going to try to press here. Yeah, I don't know if he rook has a clever seven. move here, though. Yeah, there is rook to seven, just rook seven hanging on to the pawn. But this time, I guess... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's learned his... Oh, no, he has not learned wow. his lesson. <laughs> he wants to teach Levon a lesson. 
Maybe he just wants to bleed out the mask. Look, I don't think he feels he's better here. Oh. That too, of course. But he's too enticed by Levant's clock. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait, they allowed Bishop d3. Sloppy move. Iffy. Now the king could enter. S Sloppy move by Hikaru. Now he just says, I'm bailing out. But the king enters f4. Uh, uh, this should be five. Bishop c6. Bishop c6. Levant trying, but he doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough here. I guess there's no break. Yeah, you try after g4, but that still doesn't amount to anything. He's still going, and Hikaru just has to avoid a bad pre-move. Right, yeah, there's never any zooks when the bishop always has just <laughs> a free square. Well, this is just confident pre-moving by Nakamura, and he can go bishop f5 if Levon is not careful. So time to repeat. Yes. <laughs> is Hikaru going to bleed out more clock here? <laughs> Dancing with how is it not a threefold yet? I don't understand how that's possible. No, but he's gonna wait his 10 seconds out and then play a move. And ensuring that the next game is gonna be the last. Whew, Whew. Yes. Quite a I mean, quite a merry-go-round there. Both sides, I think we're trying to win at some point, but a draw the logical result. Okay, so a pivotal game to finish off the three-point segment. It's a five-point lead currently. Can Levon score a much-needed victory with the Black Pieces? He's trying to do that with another Sicilian Queen takes d4. I feel like... Is there... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I want to commend Levon for at least trying the Sicilian and, you know, something more energetic than a solid, you know, e4, e5 line. But it didn't work out for him the first time around. Maybe... Yeah, were you going to say something along the lines of b5 at some point? b5, b4? I was going to say something that's not worth repeating. I was going to point out that knight d5 is an idea, but then I noticed that it doesn't carry a threat A, and B, it blunders A2. So <laughs> that would not contribute to the, uh, uh, to, the, to the conversation in a productive way. Now, Levon eyeing knight c4 potentially. Ooh, I love the move of rook h3, though. Ooh, Supporting spicy. that c3 knight. I like what Levon's doing on the queen side, though. Knight c4, typical Sicilian attacking moves, and b5 could come next. He's better, I think, practically at least. Well, I mean, the moment you mention knight d5, that's what I've been looking at uh, for the <laughs> last few seconds. Can you get away with it? Like, ed5, ed5, knight e5. I guess it's convenient that Levon plays his queen on a6. Yep. Now, king b1 here is a possibility, but you've always got to reckon with the, the idea of discovery. Now, as long as the knight defends the queen, you're good. Levon wants to attack with his pawns, though. Wait a second. Queen back to b8, maybe, simply? I am surprised. Well, I, I guess Kara willing to give up bishops for knights here if he can put some pressure on the d6 pawn, but it seems unlikely. Boy, was that knight a good piece, though. Yeah, knight d5 now seems to lack the luster right. to produce any serious chances. Black would be able to take and sidestep the king. Okay. So b4 is obviously very likely to be the next move for black. Well, queen h5, that is really right field. And on b4... Literally. Oh, I guess he, <laughs> he might want this knight d5 now. Oh, because he's targeting f7. Levon making a calm, developing move. Love bishop e7. But hang on. Knight d5 is very, very tempting to me. But be... hang on, Tanya. Knight d5, yeah. Yeah, you would be pinned along the e file. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to make it work. I guess it didn't. Queen g4. He's trying to make it work. Ooh, castle's here. knight d5. <laughs> Man, it's funny how knight d5 is now suddenly like the main idea. But I guess Levon can leave his king in the middle. Maybe, yeah. And play bishop, like bishop f6. Six. But then the rook's double on the default can't get, take your eyes off of the d-pawn either. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, still, still very tricky. Maybe g6 then, just so I can go b4. Great call. And now it's time for b4. Maybe you can start with a4 in order to be able to push the pawn to a3 once the a and b-pawns disappear. Oh, that is attractive. I think Levon's going to do just that. Maybe that's what he's thinking about. Okay, he plays b4 and then a4. Uh -huh. Same thing. Okay, big chance here for him. 
Yeah, this will certainly be the last game in the portion. Queen B4, big threat of A3. Yes, sir. The rook on okay. E3 is doing a good job of controlling critical squares. All right, E5. Um. So... But this just looks, this has got to be losing for white. But Hikaru trying to generate activity in the center. And his king is still pretty safe for the time being. So maybe it's time for a3. It is so messy. Yeah, I like a3. I also like the move rook h4 that exists. Getting a tempo on the queen and potentially maneuvering the other rook Great. to the c file. Now you can combine the two and play a3 now. But the question is, what's the follow-up after b3? There's tactics with bishop a4, you know, Ooh, just trying to blast ideas. through on the queen side. Also rook h to c4, as you said. Maybe 95 with rook c2. Here. Yeah, that would be my pick. Bingo. Levon's pick is queen back. I don't know about that. Well, a bit slow. I like my queen on b6 attacking b2. Yeah, I think if it ain't broke, you, you don't have to fix it and... That queen is misplaced on c7. And e4 is the move I want to play, but I have to evaluate the consequences of knight e5. Like bishop b5, even c4, which could get really chaotic. Now, now I you have rook to watch H1. the h file. Yes, well pointed out. And we're in here we go with this again mode, where Levon down to 34 seconds. Bishop f6 Why is very I circumspect, take... though. Oh, if I take on e5, bishop b5. Okay. Oh. So chaotic here. And that and rook would keep yeah, the generating rook, chances. Rook would be overloaded. That's why he played c3. The other knight can also jump into the game via b4. Yes, I think if Levon just keeps it... Well, I'm so worried about his clock to under 20 seconds. And there, the position is not resolved at all. Okay, oh, he's e4. He's going to sack, but... Exchange sacrifice. But he does exchange I don't queens, know. which... I mean, it does... Help him a little bit get those queens off the board. I get what he's doing, but I really feel like Hikaru, the worst is almost behind him here. And now it's just an unclear endgame. Yeah, it does feel like and we know it be simplifying. Oh, don't allow knight d6. Oh, because then you lose the d3 pawn. Uh-oh, oh, bishop a2! Oh, he got... Okay, but still, but still it's even material. S somehow it's even material. Levon is better, but king b1 and rook e3 if rook e2. Yes. Okay, or this. Oh, this is... And there could be some potential danger. That pawn a4 is loose. But... Icaro right. just kind of setting for a draw here. Makes sense, considering the match score. Make a move, Luan. Oh, wait. One second. Why is he, he thinking so long? Just move. And if anything, the knight is always such a dangerous piece. No reason for Hikaru to milk the clock. There's no gain from that. Because the clock isn't ticking. Right. I think Har really is trying to win this position. Okay, Levon. Wait, there was... Okay, D5. Yeah, there was potential for D5, but... Besides... Uh, don't blunder a fork. Ooh. Actually, either side can blunder a fork. But especially black. Oh. Oh. Okay. Like, Har would just Yeah, attack. now it should be... Should be under control. Oh, oh wait a sec. 92, yeah. though. Oh, my God. It almost feels like you're losing against Ikaru, even when wait, you there's have no chance oh, of no losing. Night G3, oh. no. I thought so, too. But Ikaru going around again. I think he might win this. Oh, that would be sickening. It That is a great word to describe it. <laughs> that would actually be sickening. <laughs> okay, I think it's time to... Yeah. Or not. Oh, he's going the other way. No, but King H4, King G6, so you don't want to venture too far. The problem is, when you've got this against Ikari, your hands are shaking because you just know that you can lose it at any moment. But Levon doing a great job here of holding the fort. Yeah. Now, I mean, Hikaru needs to make sure he doesn't get his knight trap somehow. Yep. Because the pawn endgame is losing for white because of the superior king position. And finally, no, Levon... Yeah, okay, now it's a repetition. <laughs> and that's Finally. all she wrote in the three-minute segment. Okay, this one's going to be aborted. And, Jeffrey, a five-point lead remains for Hikaru Nakamura. Far from a blowout, and the match is far from over. But just a commanding lead, and he's been in control ever since the opening seconds of the match.
And I would actually argue that it helps Hikaru to know what Levon is capable of um, based on that Andrake match. So there's not going to be any sort of sleepwalking through this portion, thinking that the match is over. He won't underestimate Levon, and that should bode very well for him in the bullet. It, it certainly should. He's going to take him with the utmost seriousness. Uh, and Levon, once again, he needs an absolute miracle. And we will see if he can pull it off. Now, before we go on break, we wanted to remind you that you should get ready for the quarter four 2022 State of Chess.com coming to you live on December 21st. We have some huge news for the chess community, and the event will be followed by a community QA with Danny Wrench. Plus, some very special guests will be joining the show to talk about the exciting announcements we're making and what these announcements entail for the future of the chess community. Do not miss this show. Mark your calendars for December 21st at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern time, right here on twitch.tv slash chess. Well, we hope you have your calendars marked uh, for the one plus one portion, which is coming right up here at the Speed Chess Championship. We'll be back with more Nakamura Aronian action in just a little while. Just played an exciting game and want to see if you got a brilliancy? Or maybe where you could have improved? Chess.com's game review is just a click away. Game review is a fast, fun, and instructive guided review of your games. See your accuracy and your opponent's accuracy. Check out the eval graph for an instant overview and scroll down to see how many great moves, best moves, blunders, and yes, brilliancies you have played. Learn from Chess.com's coach who gives move explanations, opening statistics, and shows you the best lines of play. With retry mistakes, you can get another shot at finding missed opportunities. Try game review today on web, iOS, or Android.
Welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship. Hikaru Nakamura facing off Levon Aronian in a fascinating round of eight match. GM Jeffrey Zhang, GM Daniel Narditsky bringing you coverage of today's match as we take a quick look at the overall prize pool and the prize distribution. These are amazingly generous prizes, Jeffrey. We've been over this many times, but it's such a great time to be alive if you're a chess fan and if you're a chess player. Never have players been able to do as well from the comfort of their own homes oh man we i mean we honestly live such a luxury i myself could not have imagined uh the state of chess where it is right now like five years back and just you know to be able to make a living from playing chess at the comfort of your own home so just to take the words from you is just really a nice feeling it is indeed, and Hikaru Nakamura must have a nice feeling. He holds an 11-6 to lead against Levon Aronian, who has, kept, who has kept it, I wouldn't say close. He's prevented Hikaru from pulling away entirely, and we've seen quite the comebacks this year in the SEC in the bullet segment, but nobody has made a comeback past three points. Levon needs to start winning early, and Jeffrey, he basically has zero margin for error, and Hikaru, of course is the worst kind of guy to try to make this comeback against. Oh, yeah. Yes to all of those points. Zero margin for error. As Levon, I think the best chance is to, you know, take it one game at a time. It only takes one to really start your run and get maybe a car rattled early on. He does switch to a London. Let's see what he has in store for us. Okay, a lot of moves being rattled out. That B7 pawn is usually pretty untouchable due to night before, which... Levon prevents. Okay, I like this. And, I, and, and he surprised all of us against Dimitri by playing ridiculously fast in the opening. He's got to repeat that here. He does. I like a move like e3, maybe knight bd2. You threaten b4. That knight could get caught on the edge of the board um, soon. Yeah, and Hikaru trying to remedy that by opening up an escape square for his knight, but instead advances to c4 and might try to follow it up with a check on a5. But b3, oh, when a5, I would even be considering to play like a bond cloud move king e2 just to keep the knights <laughs> on the board. We may see a oh, king move here. Totally possible because b3 is a massive threat, but this kind of plays into Hikaru's hands uh, in terms of forcing a time scramble. Now b4, I guess Levon wants queen b3. Ah, and oh, bishop a... c2 almost works there, but it doesn't. Well, b3, queen c3, queen takes a2, but I don't think that works. Oh my goodness, that is... <laughs> An Wait a second. Line? Okay. He goes queen c1, Bishop's... so he doesn't allow it. <laughs> Bishop c2 anyway would be hilarious. He takes b1, he almost played it. Wait, but now Bishop takes c4, maybe intermezzo, I don't know. Yeah, Knight he's going to allow the pawn to appear in a2, but I think he regains it immediately after rook a1. And then black's going to be in a tough spot on the queen side with a really big weakness on c6. Right, so here this is maybe... good for Levon. Yeah, I don't know if you take on a2 or take on c4 first, but if you can plant that rook on a6, you would have tremendous play on the queen side. No, this is a big chance in game one for Levon. Hikaru preventing the rook from advancing past a4. But now knight e5 but if... is a huge threat. Okay, and Levon can pick up this pawn at his leisure. Yes, with rook a4 anytime he chooses now. Yeah, now is a good time. He's up a pawn, he's got winning chances. Can Levon carry this forward and convert this into an extra point? He has to win this game. I don't know about the rook trade, though. I think it's still okay. Just play, yeah, e4. Don't at go some king d3. Point... <laughs> right, <laughs> at some point he's got to find the right central breaks. It's not clear to me what it what is. Uh-oh, and he's opened up the king side, and Hikaru's activated his rook. I don't like the way this is going for Levon at all. Oh, man, he can take on g3. Take on a5, H, the h pawn starts running. I think you take the bishop and take the pawn to try to go after the c pawn. But here comes Hikaru's h pawn. Oh, pawn oh is man! So fast. Is this winning for Black? Uh oh, it might be. He has to address the pawn, but then c d five. Okay, rook a eight, a prudent move. Six, just king d six, or this. Both pawns might promote. King d six, e takes d five, defends c six, and we might get some sort of a fortress. Gosh, Hikaru yeah. is defending this so well. I'm not uh, sure about that. I thought he could have simplified anymore. it. I thought he could have simplified it easier, but he is going to take on d5 next. It's going to be a draw. 
Well, rook h6 still. Or is it? No, no, this is defensible. Yes, the king should be well placed enough, yeah. And if you're Levon, do you offer a draw here? And if you I do. Card, I do you decline it? Do you decline it? <laughs> no, he hit Caro, he will. Yeah, he's going to keep the rooks on the board. The, com the comparison I've made earlier, Jeffrey, I think you'll appreciate this, is in, a, in an American football game, when you avoid making the touchdown because you're leading and you want to avoid giving the other team the oh, ball, even though yes. you're quote-unquote worse. <laughs> and now he has six. I mean, he can play this on for another two minutes. Oh, and, and that's huge. And Levon has to force the draw here. If you're Levon, you push the pawn, you force the rooks off the board, and you basically force Hikaru to repeat moves, which he doesn't have to do. Check in rook g2 yeah, is possible. Yeah, check and move the rook anywhere. Oh, my God. He, is, he has taken five minutes off the clock in game one. Five minutes. But I guess he's content with allowing this repetition. But, yeah, that is a ton of time going away. And another big miss for Levon. I mean, he cannot afford even a single more one of these misses in what was a borderline winning endgame. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he just had a clean pawn up. Couldn't figure out the right ways to move forward. And Icaro oh. manages to salvage another one. This is a nice... I like this approach from Levon, though. You have to create chances with these kinds of uh, offbeat systems. Plenty of time left for a comeback, but he needs to start winning right about now. Is he dropping and, the e5 when I guess there was rook e8? Ugh. Okay, he's unbalancing the game, which I really like, but queen a4 looked... Oh, no, no, d3 oh, no, no, was hanging. No, the, okay. Yeah, yeah, d3 was still hanging. Sorry this about that. Similar narrative to the last game, except this time Levon with the... Uh, oh, uh, no. Knight, and yeah, this is very unpleasant. This is actually a total positional nightmare. Just look at the light squares in the center, and that bishop on f8, just a passive spectator... This is right up Hikaru's alley. He wins 100% of the time in these types of positions. Oh, yeah. A5, another clinical move, stopping any sort of knight b6 ideas. You can leave the knight on c4. You can bring the other one over to d5. Just an absolute disaster for Levon. Rook to d5, maybe there's knight f6. So you want to be, you want to tread cautiously if you're white, but you can just preserve the status quo as long as you want, waiting for the opportunity to cash in. Yes, and he's doing just that with rookie one. At some point, I do want to maneuver the other knight around. I'm not sure how exactly. Maybe now, knight ft2 on the next move. Knight ft2, does that allow rook b8? But well, worst case, you've got f3. Yeah. Levon doing a good job so far. He's activating his knight. Can he take on e4? Hang on. Yeah, was this a slight bluff? I'm not sure what. Oh, there's knight d5, knight c7 with the fork. Oh, there is. Okay, but it seems that Levon's making some progress in terms of activating his pieces. Hikaru probably fine with a draw, but he goes for it. Now, I think still he stabilized it enough that, I mean, this powerful knight on c4, and also the pawn on b6 against pawn on b7 long term could spell danger for black. Oh, absolutely. You're going to go after it with your knights. This, I'm very pessimistic about Levon's chances here in this game. Yeah, bishop h6 allows queen d5. Now knight d6 is a huge threat. Gotta go bishop f8. And yeah, yeah Hikaru can bring do his anything king up. he wants. And this is going to be another incredibly long game. I think g5, though. Objectively, it should be close to a fortress now once you put the knight on c6. Or is Hikaru it, though? making space for his king to get to c4 and maybe maneuver the other knight around. I mean, you could try oh, forever and then king here. Oh, king d5. Oh, man, that is huge. Knight yep. f5. Making all sorts of inroads into Black's position. This is almost Zook's one. Maybe yeah, why it is. is it point 0.8? <laughs> it's point 0.8. That's such oh, a misleading eval. You can actually give up the c pawn and put your knight right back on c6. Oh, because you can't defend a5. This is phenomenal defense by Levon so far, but we know how this ends. It's oh, only man. a matter of time before Hikaru forces a mistake. So hard to keep up. Four seconds. Oh, wait a 30. second. Check in knight a Oh, there's no knight a6. So you might have to force a draw here. Yeah, Hikaru quite invisibly annoyed with himself. Is there another way to try? I don't see it. But ultimately, he's taken another four minutes off the match clock. So it's a successful result. Like, if he draws all the games, he wins the right. match by five points. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, it's not, a, it's not exactly the worst outcome ever. 
Oh, far from it. And it's another super long game. He's going to milk the rest of his clock down and make a draw. Yeah, close, but no cigar there for Hikaru. But yeah, for Levon, now he's got to get some wins. Nine minutes off the match clock. He's made zero progress. And yeah, I keep saying it. He's got to start winning now. He's got to start winning now. He really has to start winning now because <laughs> he doesn't have much time left. This is going to be another very dry opening position after Bishop C3 and 84, I presume. We're even drier now that White doesn't even get the Bishop pair. Yeah, another one of those Petrov, Berlin type of structures that both of these players are so familiar with. Levon trying to play aggressively, but C6 and D5 is just super watertight for Black. Maybe you go C3, Bishop C2. That's the only idea I see. But Black can always put their Knight on F6, so it just really leads to nowhere. Yep. No, this is it's clear what Ikara's strategy is. Get these solid positions, milk the clock down, make sure every game takes between, you know, four and five minutes, and chill. Yeah, it's just nothing to write home about for Levon. Try C4. Good try. Keep keep some spice alive. Now, can you go like 93? I want to open the bishop up with d5 at some point, but the Mm -hmm. Still liquidating. Knight a5, interesting, okay. Ooh. But does this actually produce anything concrete? If black just takes on d5 and goes knight c5. b4? But now the knight gets really jumpy and white's pieces are falling apart. Ooh. Rook d8's coming. Oh, man, rook d8. Or also knight a4, potentially. Absolutely. Okay, that was a good find. Great move by Levon, opening up two attacks on the knight. Now, knight to five, queen d5. Oh, well, there, there is just g6. Be... Like, g4, always queen g5, for example. And worst case, you can drop the bishop back to e6 if you're worried about the pin. Oh, you, you do have now. That. Yeah, I feel okay, like there should this. be a good way to simplify into another drawish endgame. Yeah, wow. This is quite the match strategy for Hikaru. Just make a draw in every bullet game. He might be getting more here. This pin is annoying on the, the Diva, and oh. Levon's going to sack a queen. No, but that was just that was a terrible decision by Levon because not only is this going to take a while, he has no winning chances in the resulting position. Oh, man. I could see another five minutes coming off. <laughs> oh, definitely. And I could see Hikaru winning this game. Objectively, it should still be a fortress. So you keep your rook on the third rank. You make sure the black king can't walk in. But, I mean, you could really just play this on forever. Yeah, in theory, it should be an easy draw. But in practice, there's... Like, you can make the right pawn moves at the right moment. F6, G4. And it's so easy to forget about a pin or misplace your rook or allow the opponent's king to get to H3. So let's see how Hikaru tries to squeeze a win out here. Right, at some moment, king H5 or F5 is going to be played. Maybe there it is. Oh, not yet. He goes f5 first with f4. Mm -hmm. Potentially f4 now, but then white will take and go rook f3, I think. Yes, he's but still then... got it under control, but it's dicey. Gosh. f1, rook d3. Yep. And I, the key is to keep all of your pieces on defended Can squares. Take... Now, don't forget. Uh, uh huh. I was wondering if I could go after the a5 pawn there, but maybe too much. Another idea is to trade into a pawn endgame. Give up the queen for the rook and the knight, and black's king is more active. So Levon has to keep an eye on that as well. Yeah, I think he's done a good thing, though. Maybe he can even walk his king up. This is a good <laughs> configuration. True. Listen, if he wins the a4 pawn, he's going to start playing for a win. So Hikaru is suddenly on his back foot a little bit. Right. Queen e2, knight d4, easy to blunder. Oh, I was about to propose that. And easy to blunder for white as well. Suddenly the pieces are very loose. Oh, now is there a queen e2? I guess you still have knight before Knight back. before, yep. And now the pawn cannot be defended. Whoa. Yeah, Levon might try here, as you said. He should, but the positive for Hikaru is that prolongs the game by another three minutes. I mean, this game is taking a ridiculous amount of time off oh, the match man. clock. We're at, we're at the halfway point, and we've only played two games. Crazy, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Levon... Levon might have to pray for some kind of knight for it, because, yeah, this could go on and on and on. Start pushing. But 
Can you keep pushing? And F3 needs to be protected at all times. This is still a draw. Knight C3 is actually making some progress. Can you go A5? The problem is it's so easy to miss a fork if you're white. If you over push, you overextend your pieces. And Wait a second. I really a like how he's... Don't take. Yeah, you couldn't take there. There was queen C1. Yukaro going to keep checking. Oh, Knight what a D4, move. I think. Oh, knight D5. Oh, make a F move. Oh, my God. No, oh, whoa, wrong oh, way. Slip. Oh, no. Wrong way. Knight C3. Oh, my lands. And Levon just smiles. I mean, I think um, he definitely saw Knight C3, but I mean, you just panic. Like, your hand was probably shaking for, for the last 20, 30 moves, and that just happens. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many Bonds White wins. It's just an easier position to play for Black because he's got the Queen, he's got the checks. And now it has officially gotten basically out of hand with 15 and a half left on the match clock. Levon literally has to be perfect the rest of the way. Yeah, and I mean, he's you... not perfect. He's losing. Again. The way a car is dragging it out, I don't even know if you can get six games. <laughs> oh, no. We've gotten three games in, in 15 minutes. <laughs> I mean, think about that for a second. Yeah, let that sink in. It's just crazy. And Levon with a disaster of an opening here. Bishop c2, queen d3 comes to mind. Also, h4, you can shatter the structure. And Levon is a good bullet player, Jeffrey. I think I think it's safe to say, you know, if you're competitive against Ikaro like this, he's a great bullet player. But that slight lack of experience, that slight lack of speed. Oh, Bishop G5. And look at this. Look at this. Oh, an F7 falling. And you do Cars. not want this in a bullet game. He smells blood here. I think you have to go Rook of Fate, and then he's just going to... I don't think he's even going to take on D7. Maybe he'll just lift up his Rook, add more fuel to the fire. Rook E3 looks like a fantastic move. Yeah, similar idea, just bring stuff into the game. Now, Queen F3, I mean, he, yeah. Okay, now he decides to take, I guess he wants to open the D file. With D5. Or DC. Both looked so tempting. Knight of Fate. Loana attempting to hold it together, I like this. Now, D6 and Queen F3 is one idea. You can also, ooh, Bishop A4 threatening maybe D6 or Bishop C6. Rookie eight also in the mix at some point because the knight is immobilized. Okay, now Levon making some progress. Yeah, he needs to block the deep one though. Don't allow d6. He did have the move bishop f6 yeah, there, to d4. Yes, bishop d4 seemed good. He's allowed Ikaro to get his rook into the game. Now it's clear that white's advantage has evaporated, but it's and anybody's now d6. game. Yeah, it is razor sharp. Rook f3, queen d6. So d7 while Whoa. taking advantage of the fact black can't take. Wait, now he's got to win, I think. Rook d4 and queen d... No. Oh! Those ideas oh, are close. That's the move! Plays g3, which is apparently the move, because yes, the queen must leave, and then rook Oh d4 my and god. Win. Unbelievably cold-blooded, forcing the queen off, and now Levon loses again. Rook e8. Rook e8 and, and just rook f4 for his... Or, where do you go, actually? Oh, you just, just take. takes it. No, he's literally playing this like an engine. Queen e3, I guess. Oh, man. Or maybe just... Rook f4 also wins. Rook f4 covering all the exits. <laughs> Queen f3. Don't blunder mate on e2. Oh! Wait, wait Bishop a second. Six? Super clever defensive resource by Levon. But how do you avoid the checks here? Is Queen b3? You don't. You fly. Yeah, the Queen will just slither itself in. Just insane. Just insane! And he's doing it again. He's pulling away. And when you're playing Hikaru, this just always seems to happen, unless your name is Magnus Carlsen. Really does. And yeah, it's probably officially in the books. Nikaru yeah. <laughs> playing some funny opening now. Yeah, he's let himself relax a little bit and explore some new opening territory. But he makes lemonade out of lemons. I think he's got a great position out of the opening again. Practically Somehow, speaking. some way. Yeah. Levon going to try to put the knight on f3. At least he controls the g5 square. Maybe there are attacking chances down the road. Levon's only chance now is to win in the boxing. Says B can exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, b4. He's tilting. He's tilting. It's all falling he's apart. Tilting. Yeah, 94. 
Bishop f5, Bishop oh, d3. Oh, okay. Gotta watch out for rook g6. There are... Did he Whoa, rook... Oh, there's rook h... Wait, rook g6, knight the f... queen would get trapped. So he goes rook h6. Oh, knight, knight f6. F6? I think he missed knight g5 there, and suddenly the ah. attack becomes insurmountable. Oh, because there's knight h7 on rook h8. And now... Uh-huh. Rook h8? Oh, he blunders again. And just gives up the exchange. Oh my goodness. Did Carter find another way out? Oh. He just goes Jeez. from winning to losing. He doesn't even go through equality. You know, it's like FM <laughs> to GM. <laughs> yeah, no, just nothing in between. Queen G5, this is ridiculous tactics here. And the reason he played F3 was to pin the knight so that you can't play knight takes C4 with tempo here. Oh my god, how does he see that? Instantly. Now, is there even a way to deal with this? F4, knight of four. No, there's just nothing. All sorts of discoveries mm -hmm. at his disposal. Rook h5. No, then you take on g5 with check. So watch out. I guess you go just queen e5 or queen f5. Yeah, this works. Queen takes queen c2. Takes e2. Bishop f5 even. The simple. Simple move ends it. And everything's pinned. And now it's rook, H8. rook H5. Okay. Easy enough. And another one in the can for Nakamura. And I stand corrected. I thought the bullet was going to be competitive, but he's pulled away entirely here. That third game, yeah. I mean, I guess Levon did have a couple of chances early on, but since that, Hikaru has been storming. And now Levon is super tilted. And I think that the first game, honestly, was the turning point, I, I would argue, Jeffrey, because there, Levon had his best chance. He, he had a winning end game. He wins that game. It's a four-point match. And that is far from reassuring. That game draws. It, it takes five minutes off the clock. And it's just so frustrating to have to do that again and again when you're playing Hikaru. Yeah, I totally agree. That felt like the backbreaker. Um, well, some of Levon's managed to get a reasonable position yeah. out of this. I thought he was tilted out of the opening. He was like pre-moving e6, c6, and b6, but suddenly he's doing pretty well again. Rose h5 looks risky. But I guess he's going to follow that up with g6 or knight f6. Mm-hmm. Queen e3. Yeah. Still... Wow. Well, for a car, I think you can just put a knight on g5. It'll be uncontested there. Where's the e5? Why is he shaking his head? <laughs> I mean, you're up by eight. <laughs> yeah, he's not. A, he wants to be up by 15, I guess. He wants to get a better position out of the opening in this game. But it looks like he's got a better position now. Yeah, I'm looking at some sort of g4, just really opening all the floodgates to the king. I think he wants number one bullet also. <laughs> like, he's definitely thinking about it. Just accomplishing so is... everything. Now, King J, Rook G3. This is where the commentator has to recuse himself from the conversation. Rook D7. It's very close here, but Rook G6 met with Rook G7. Maybe you play H6 here? He wants to bring the other Rook. Levon running to e7. He's carved out a little pathway with his rooks. But h6 is in the mix. Right. Those h pawns could actually become queens if black doesn't play this directly. Okay. Wait. Not sure about F6. the queen no, trade, Hikaru's, though. Hikaru's taking his foot off the gas pedal here. Yeah, this should be a win for Levon. He's got enough time, I feel. Maybe just king, king f7. f7. I don't know about that idea. Now he's given him connected passers, which is always dangerous, even if they're restrained. Right. I don't know how convincing being. is this. King g4 and h5. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Levon is just giving Hikaru activities, handing it to him. Is h6. He... Maybe rook no, f2. H... Oh, oh, h7, God, h7 almost, almost works. works. <laughs> rook h1. Maybe, maybe. But maybe you still play h7 because you can penetrate along the f file with rook h2. King g8 is a possibility if you want to stop the pawn. Right. King G, that is a huge move. Yeah, not blundering any h7 ideas. Okay, now Levon should win it, but it's still not over because Hikaru is very close to all these pawns. Yeah, there's like rook d7. <laughs> all right, king e7. This should be good enough now. 
this might be the lowest amount of bullet games they're going to end up playing. Like, they've gone five games and it's almost over. Yeah, Carr is going gonna, is gonna to take his sweet time here yet again. Oh, yeah. He's gotten every game into the super drawn-out end game. And he can build up a minute on his clock and win he's and, and and milk out another minute. Wait, what is Levon doing? I think he just got impatient there. A five. Now A five this he's should be. He's gonna pull a out a draw. He might lose this, like that A pawn. Yeah, I, I was literally opening my mouth to say that A six already threatens a win. Oh. Oh. Okay. A three, rook B seven is a draw. Yep, just a fortress. No way to make progress. But if you move your king, you allow king b3 and you lose. Right, so where do you go? But this allows king c5. I'm not sure what was the right move there. Yeah, it was hard to defend practically. But it's and still, I mean, this. it is winning, but it's going to take time. <laughs> Forever, yeah. Hikaru is going to milk so much time here. This is crazy. This is only the sixth game in the portion. Yeah, we might only see like two more after this. We might see less bullet games than than uh, three plus one games, which has got to be rare, even though there's obviously less time to play bullet. For sure, in a car. Don't go B4. <laughs> there was a mate there. All right. Yeah, he's going to go for the typical Vankira setup. Yeah, being B1, B2, build a bridge. Oh my God, this game is still going. <laughs> and he might, I mean, he might really. Play till mate. Like even when Levon promotes. If you want to maximize your drawing chance or your 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 milking time, you build up thirty more seconds on your clock and then sit. So we're not even close to this game being over. And how much time has it already been? Five minutes plus. At least, yeah. I'm, at I'm least mesmerized. I'm mesmerized by how much time he's taking off of the clock with each game. And Levon is and struggling the game is to still going. Yeah, the game is still going. <laughs> Rook a6, rook a6, king c1, and king a1. Yes. He's not actually progressing. Don't make a three-foot. All right, he finally finds the idea. King b3, king a1 wins on the spot. But here we go again. Take it. Yeah, rook Take king, it rook and play that. <gasps> oh, my God. Build yeah, up and... <laughs> some time on the clock and keep on milking. Another minute off the clock. Unbelievable. Levon is struggling. You made him. <laughs> Make a move, Levon! Oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my I think gosh. Levon honestly doesn't mind uh, playing fewer this games is either. This is ridiculous. He's going to take another 30 seconds off the clock. Yeah, this might actually be god. the penultimate game. This might be the longest bullet game in SEC history. <laughs> I think it is, Jeffrey. I think this took six minutes off the match clock. Did we start at 10? Yeah, there might have been 10 minutes. I think there was like 9-something, yeah. Oh my gosh. This is brutal. And Levon is just smiling incredulously. So we are going to see a record low because if my memory serves me right, it's normally like an average of 27, 28 games, but probably going to be 24 at the end, which is incredibly low. Yeah. And he played with nine seconds left, so Hikar didn't complete his strategy. Okay, now it's fun time. It's party time. And the match is over. Yeah, I saw Hikaru <laughs> using this A5, A4 run it up in his uh, disrespect speed runs. Let's see if it works on Levon. He's got it. He's actually got a pretty decent position, I must say. Hikaru is streaming, I believe. You mean he's streaming the match live or the match live? So it's a it's a disrespect speed run against Aronia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. This the way the match has gone, this will be the last game of the portion, but given how sharp the position is, we might see a resolution a little bit faster than usual. Right, yeah. I mean, if they get another end game, it will certainly be the last game. But can Levon made him, he's gonna try with F four. No, white is white's got to be winning here. <laughs> this is not yeah, one of Hikaru's the best A games. Rook f six. Well, yeah, rook f six. Eh, I think he'll still fight here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Why did Levon? 
You have to trade the queens. I guess he's content with having the past E or A pawn. King is still cut. Now he's got a past H pawn, so this should be should be reasonably com I mean comfortable win. Nakamura isn't gonna be happy with his bullet rating after the match, but this has just been all dominance, all Hikaru, really since the second half of the five minute portion, I would argue. Yes. I mean so. I don't even remember where this match got away from Levon. I think he started 0 and 2, got back within one. But yeah, the, those last two games in the five minute seg segment is where I would pinpoint uh, the match getting out of hand in a way. It was a wire to wire victory, as you said. And, you know, yeah, he definitely had his chances throughout the five minute portion. He came a little bit close. There was a time in the three minute portion when I think Levon got it down to four and he had chances to bring it down to three. But Hikaru yes. is so good at allowing, at preventing his opponents from gaining any kind of momentum, as I said earlier. And he does it again here. He can milk out the rest of the match clock with this game. And, and, he, and he, I think he will. And he might win. <laughs> Suddenly he's like better. Yeah, this A pawn not going anywhere after rook A3. How do you draw this for white? I didn't even notice how this got bad for Levon. I mean, he was just up a pawn. Right, and it now he's like, losing. Yeah, it seemed like a position he could never lose, but the Caro, that's just that's just a challenge. Yep, exactly. Rook a seven and king f five, and he's gonna keep milking this. Okay, it's a draw. But yeah, it wow. felt like any time Levon got short on time, outside of that one early game, I think in the five minute portion, which he found a way. Just he never had enough time to convert his advantages. Simple as that. We're going to get a rook versus rook, a trade. Oh, okay. Hikaru <laughs> does not need to be doing this because there's no more time on the match clock. <laughs> just to be safe, I guess. Yeah, and since he is streaming, I think he just... Okay, he checked the match clock. He repeats the moves, and the match is officially over. The final score is 15 and a half to eight and a half, a seven point victory for Hikaru. And it was never really in question, Jeffrey, was it? No, not at all. From the get go, Hikaru opened that match with the two point lead, never let it go. It was never even tied to wire to wire victory. And he is the second player to move on to the semifinals. And the games themselves were close. I mean, the games themselves were close. They were incredibly entertaining. Super fun match, but I think if we had to pinpoint one area where Hikaru really asserted his dominance across the time controls, it was in the arena of time scrambles. Like, almost every time scramble he won, regardless of the valuation, right? Exactly. And I seem to remember this the one five-minute game where Levon, I think, was up a rook for like five pawns. And Hikaru even managed to not only draw that position, but win it. And... Since then, I mean, it's just hard not to get rattled as Levon and Matt just filed from there. It did indeed, and we will have an interview with the winner, with Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, he will be offering his thoughts on this super entertaining match as Hikaru is officially into the semifinals. He's our second semifinalist after Nihal Sarin. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, another Speed Chess Championship match is in the books, but don't go anywhere because we will have Hikaru Nakamura in the studio to share his thoughts on the other side of this short break. Stay tuned. Your subscription makes shows like this possible, which is why our Twitch subscribers will never see ads on chess.com. Connect your chess.com account and Twitch account at go.chess.com slash connect accounts and bang, boom, voila, you're done. 100% ad-free bliss forevermore. Whether you're following our events on site or on stream, type the command connect in the chat and thank you for helping bring these shows to life.
Welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship, and we have the winner of today's match. Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura is in the studio for a quick interview. Hikaru, congratulations on a very resounding victory. Could you start uh, by sharing your general thoughts on how you played and on the trajectory of the match? So like five or six games were very competitive, and then Levon kind of fell apart at the end of five plus one. And I mean, after that, I mean, I mean, it was just a waste of everybody's time because there was really no coming back. Um, so yeah, it, it really just came down to maybe the, the five plus one portion. After that, I mean, what what to say? It just wasn't meant to be for Levon. So I'm I'm happy, obviously. Yeah, I would also like to say my congrats to Hikaru. Very very convincing stuff um, from the start. So, yeah, you talk a little bit about that five-minute portion, and would you pinpoint, like, the turning point where it really started to go downhill for Levon, the one game where I think you were up a rook, or you were down a rook for, for five pawns that game. Uh, the moment you lost that, would you say that was actually the end of the match? Well, I mean, that's when I won. I, was, that the game, was that the game when I was up three and a half, two and a half? So I know I won two at the end, but I wasn't sure if that you was when I was up by You were up by two. I, it was, I think you were up four and a half, two and a half. So that was the last one. Ah, so that, oh, so that was the last game of the five plus one. Yeah, I mean, probably like the, that, the game before in that game was really sort of the nail in the coffin. I mean, to be fair, though, in that game uh, where he had the rook for the five pawns, I was also completely winning and I messed it up by allowing this e6 and, and all the counterplay. Um, so it could have been different, too. But I really, it was just the five plus one. I mean, once um, I was up by three, I, I think five plus one was objectively where Levon would probably probably have the best chances overall. Um I mean, whenever we, whenever he got low on time, I, I just seemed to outplay him. And when we were in those scrambles, five seconds on the clock, uh, I mean, I was just better than him. So really, it, it was simply the five plus one where he had the best chance. When he wasn't able to keep it close to the five plus one, I mean, the rest was just smooth sailing. So yeah, it was really as simple as just those two games. Probably when I was up three and a half, two and a half, winning those final two. Oh, and actually, wait, three and a half, two and a half. Was it, wait, 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 was it three and a half, two and a half where I had where I played rook takes c four? Is that the game where uh, I, I allowed that whole rook takes c four f six thing? A crazy it was a crazy sequence where you sack an exchange it like yeah yeah it's the one with rook c4 f6 is one uh -huh. with bishop g4 and rook c5 right exactly yeah. yeah yeah so i mean yeah that that game was very critical too because i mean I, I that game probably i should not have won either i mean that probably should have been should have been a um should, should have been a drop so yeah those last two games with five plus one that was that was really all there was to it it's just that simple um and yeah when i won those two games i mean Obviously, in three plus one, Levon had some chances too. I mean, I thought it was a very sloppy, sloppy match from you know from there on by both of us. But again, like I said, I think it was pretty clear what the direction was going to be. So that happens. Mm -hmm. Hikaru, if you had to only keep one time control, is it fair to say that the three plus one time control is where you feel most comfortable asserting your dominance? You know, I don't. I don't know. It's funny because every time I play these, play in the SEC, somehow I really enjoy the five plus one. Like for example, I think I when I played Fedosev maybe last year or two years ago, I, I crushed him in the five plus one, and it's weird because I really enjoy playing five plus one, where you can think, you can get down like a minute on the clock. Like I do a lot of things that I normally don't do in three plus one or one plus one because I'm trying to play good chess. Um, so it, it, I really like the five plus one objectively. Um, but in terms of what I think is my 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 best control, I, I would have to say it's it's probably, I mean I would say it's one plus one. The, the thing is though, in the one plus one, like these two matches, there's really, I mean there's been nothing to play for, so it's kind of hard to stay motivated. I mean the match against Pravian and Levon today, I mean it's sort of like just get to the end of the match as opposed to try and uh, run up the score. So, um, I mean I, I like all the time controls. Mm -hmm. We have one feature chat question before we let you go. Dagenge13 asks, Hikaru, how do you feel about Nihal's performance thus far in the SEC and about facing him next up? Um, well, I haven't really seen much of his matches. I think I caught a little bit of his match against Anish, like the last two games before they went to the uh, the four-game tiebreaker. So I caught the last two or three games of that. That's that's pretty much all that I've seen. Um, I did play Nihal in India, obviously, so I am aware of you know aware of his talent and, and obviously watching the CGC as well. So it should be a fun match, um, and I'm just looking forward to it. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Fantastic. Well, Hikaru, we'll let you go. Have a great rest of your stream, and congratulations on the match victory. Thank you, you guys. Have a good one. All right. Well, that's that. Hikaru Nakamura in the studio and on his A game today. Jeffrey, as he wins by seven points. And as he said, I mean... 
he was just kind of treading water in the bullet. Um, not to suggest he wasn't playing well, but the match really was decided uh, in that three-minute portion. Yeah, it really was. And I think it's amazing how confident he was. He was only up by three in the five-minute, but he basically said that that was that. So, yeah, just a really, really uh, huge way to go into the semifinals, and that will be a barn burner of a matchup uh, against Nihal. Oh, that is going to be, I mean, so mouthwatering. Let's take a quick look at our bracket. We have our first two semifinalists who will be facing each other, Hikaru and Nihal. Just a classic one for the ages, and this is why we all love the SCC. Um, and we have yet to determine the second semifinal matchup. But before we even get there, we have two absolutely mouthwatering matchups for you, uh, Carlson Caruana and Wesley MBL. Jeffrey, I mean, what more could you possibly ask for out of the SCC? Oh, my goodness. I mean, <laughs> a rematch of the World Championship match that went down to the wire. It's, it's like plenty of riches right now. We just got to witness chess boxing. Now we have this. Tomorrow... Another one slated. It's just insane. It's insane. It's coming your way tomorrow, Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and 7 p.m. Central European time. This is unmissable. You are not allowed to miss the Carlson Caruana SCC rematch. Fabi has been defying the narrative, playing some incredible chess. Uh, really, after the candidates, he has been a man on a mission in all time control. So do not miss tomorrow's match at 10 a.m. Pacific. And also, do not miss uh, a, a, another event that's coming your way on December 13th tomorrow, which will be your chance to play against sports legends Larry Fitzgerald and Gordon Hayward. Not chess and not football and basketball. You will have a chance to play chess with them in the first ever collab stream between these two chess fans. Players will battle Fitzgerald and Hayward in a rapid time control arena, and all of the action will be live streamed on Gordon's Twitch channel. To become eligible and join the arena on game day, head on over to go.chess.com slash play Gordon. Go.chess.com slash play Gordon and join Gordon Hayward's chess.com club. And, of course, he plays for, uh, I wouldn't say my team, but my hometown team, Charlotte Hornets. So I uh, love to see Gordon playing chess. Drop exclaim legends in the chat for a direct link. So that's 1030 Pacific. The Carlson match is at 10 Pacific. I mean, you can do whatever you want tomorrow, but it's going to be an incredible day of chess. Jeffrey, I'll pass it back to you for your final thoughts on what we saw today. Yeah, uh, I mean, well, it just felt like yet another day at the office for Hikaru. Never really fell out of his grasp. I think, you know, you could pinpoint one or two of those five plus one games. Had Levon won, it could have gone another way. But in the end, yeah, Hikaru moves on. It's been a pleasure as always. You've been grinding like crazy at this SEC. So I think I speak on behalf of everyone when I say we, we fully appreciate your work. And thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jeffrey. I'm touched. It's always an honor and a pleasure to commentate with you. You offer incredible insights. And, uh, you know, I'm just uh, lucky to have courtside seats to these matches. I can't wait for tomorrow's match, which uh, I'll be bringing you together with Danny Wrench. So, Jeffrey, thank you to you. Uh, thank you to everybody in the chat. Chat was super lively today, supporting these amazing players who put everything out on the line. And, of course, to our wonderful Chess.com crew for yet another flawless broadcast. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we wish you a pleasant rest of your Monday. Join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific for Carlson versus Caruana. An epic rematch. But for now, from the Speed Chess Championship, GM Daniel Nardisky and GM Jeffrey Zhang wishing you uh, a great rest of your evening. We will see you tomorrow.